So, inshallah, today uh, we begin the 10th juz. رَبِّ شَحْ لِي صَدْرِ وَيَسِرْ لِي أَمْرِ وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةَ مِنْ لِي سَانِ يَبْكَهُ قَوْلِ آمِنْ يَا رَبْ If you remember, the surah started with يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ O Prophet ﷺ, they ask you about the spoils of war. So now, uh, here is the more detailed discussion about the spoils of war. Over there, it was just said, it's for Allah and His Messenger. They will decide. You don't have to, you know, you're not going to decide amongst yourselves. Allah will decide what, how the spoils of war will be used. Okay. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ So, know it well, that anything that you gain, okay, of anything, فَأَنَّا لِلَّهِ خُمُصُهُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ then know that for Allah is one fifth, okay? Wali Rasuli and to His Messenger is also one fifth. So Allah and His Messenger get one fifth. Wadil Qurba and the relatives of who of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because he he you know the Prophet had no uh, job. His job was to be a uh, messenger, and so a portion of the uh, the uh, anfal one fifth of it went to the Prophet to, to support himself, but also to support his wives. But in addition to that, it also went to, well, so over here, Qurba means, Wazil uh, Qurba, Zi Qurba, for who? Rasulullah. Wal Yatama wal Masakini wa Ibn Sabil, to the orphans and to the helpless people, wa Ibn Sabil, stranded on the, uh, you know, in their, in their travel, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ And if you believe in Allah, وَمَا, وما أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا And whatever we have sent down to our servant صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا يَوْمَ الْفُرْقَانِ يَوْمَ, يوم تَلْقَ الْجَمْعَانِ If you believe in whatever we sent down on our messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, if you were there, and whatever we sent down to him uh, regarding the issue of the يَوْمُ الْفُرْقَانِ why Yawmul Furqan? Now, because this was the first of the series of punishments that Quraysh would get for dis for turning away from the Prophet As I mentioned, uh, if Prophets of Allah come, they deliver the message. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala makes the message clear. Allah shows the miracles. If they still deny after the miracles, Allah puts different torments, difficulties in the city. So that perhaps they will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they still don't turn and they become completely stubborn, then the nation is uh, is erased from the face of the earth. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the nations of Nuh, the nations of Lut, the nations of Salih, so on, so on and so forth. So, but now because the Prophet sallallahu was the last messenger, he was the final messenger of Allah, he had to do the same job but with his hard work and that meant and with the ultimate uh, you could say sacrifice there's no manna and salwa there's no clouds that are going to follow you there's going to be no hitting the staff on the rock and getting 12 wells none of that uh, and Allah has the power to do all things so the first uh, you can say installment of the punishment that perhaps Quraysh will look back and think that yes, in fact, the Prophet ﷺ does help have the help of Allah and the prophecies the Prophet had been making have been coming true. The first of that installment is mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal. Now, when is Surah Al-Anfal mentioned? After Surah Al-An'am and Surah Al-A'raf. What is the main theme of these two surahs? The main theme of these two surahs was, why don't you bring another another sign for us? Why don't you bring, okay, one more sign for us to see that, you know, you're, Allah is really with you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said, had said, no, no more signs, this is it. People before you, Prophet Muhammad, they were given signs, they didn't believe because the signs were given. Those that were going to believe, were going to believe. Those that were on guidance because Allah knew something good in their heart. And those that were not on guidance because Allah knew something is flawed with their heart. You'll also notice that Surah uh, Al-Anfal and Surah Al-A'raf place a lot of uh, emphasis on humkal an'am, you know, summum bukmun umyun fahum la yarji'un, they're deaf, they're dumb, they're blind, they're, you know, asammu wa bukmu, they have become 
blind and deaf and more blind and more deaf and hum kalanam they're like the cattle balhum adal but even worse than that you know not talking about their physical uh, stature or the physical uh, ability to see but the spiritual ability to see so anyway now that Badr had come, it had become the talk of the town. Over here, another thing, because you have the first installment, in the, uh, and then you had the last installment, Surah Tawba, which is the next surah coming. So this is the logic between these two surahs, okay? So two surahs, why, didn't, why don't you give uh, Prophet Muhammad another sign? And now two surahs saying that this is the first installment, and this was the last installment. This was the final victory, which was the book. But over here... Another thing that's very important to understand is the Prophet Sallallahu had uh, a special mission which was to the Arabs and by Tabuk his special mission to the Arabs had been completed. You know up till the time of Hudaybiyah, up till the time of Hudaybiyah all of the Prophet's effort were centered and focused on the Arabs and the Prophet had said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Oh Arabs, I've come to you specifically. And to all mankind in general. So now the Prophet's mission actually started with the outside world in general. Okay, after Hudaybiyah, when he started sending the letters to the uh, to to the Coptics, to the uh, to the Egyptians, to Ethiopia, and this was now in Najashi had passed away. The Prophet had even prayed his prayer. Uh, in, in uh, you know, Salatul Janaza Ghaib, uh, the Salatul Janaza was prayed uh, without the presence of the Najashi's body, and uh, and the Prophet had sent a letter to the Roman Empire. He sent a letter to the Persian Empire. All this happened when the uh, treaty was made for uh, um, the treaty was made for a ten-year peace contract, which then Quraysh later on broke. So in the first of these installments, it was said that one fifth will go to the Prophet and to the Yatama Masakin wa Ibn Sabil, wa in kuntum amantum billahi wa ma unzil wa ma anzalna ala abdina yom al furqan, yom al yom al tal tal al taqal jama'an. I'm sorry, my dyslexia makes it difficult for me to read sometimes. Um, Wallahu ala kulli shayin kadir. Allah has the power to do all things. إِذْ أَنْتُمْ فِي الْعُدْوَةِ الدُّنْيَا Now this uh, is talking about the place the Prophet ﷺ was in. You know, in the olden days, there was no way to be exactly on time on a meeting. Because how can you tell somebody, you know, you can't tell somebody, I'll see you here at 3.32, right? So... Over here, it's talking about the fact that their meeting of the two groups was an appointment set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah set this appointment. So, إِذْ أَنْتُمْ بِالْعَدُوَّةِ الدُّنْيَا When you were on the, the, the lower side and the near side of the valley, وَهُمْ فِي الْعُدُوَّةِ الْقُسْوَى And they were on the far side of the valley. وَرَكَّبُوا أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ And the, uh, the caravan of Abu Sufyan was lower than you. So now here you're faced with a big enemy. If you had been promised, you would have had a difference of, you know, you wouldn't have, if you had promised each other, okay, we'll meet at this time, you would have definitely, one would have come before the other. But the fact that you both came at the same time, at the same time, you both met each other. You came to this valley. Right at the same time. Lakin liyakdi Allahu amara kana mafula li liyahlika man halaka an bani natin. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, but liyakdi Allahu amara kana mafula, so that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would bring about what was already destined to be. لِيَحْلِكَ مَنْ حَلَكَ أَنْ أَنْ بَنِينَةٍ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would destroy the people that are on the wrong side, side with a clear evidence that they were on the wrong side. That is that they lost the battle of Badr. وَيُحْيَ مَنْ حَيَّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ بَنِينَةٍ 
and so that those that would live live on clear evidence they would have clear evidence the believers would have clear evidence that look you know here's Allah's help Allah is with you Allah is there supporting you you went through a lot of persecution you went through a lot of hardship you believed in Prophet Muhammad you were kicked out of the houses you know your inners testified that this is the truth you believed in the Quran and over here now Allah has helped you to show you clearly that Allah is with you وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَسَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is all-hearing and all-knowing. إِذْ يُرِيكَ هُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنَامِكَ قَلِيلًا وَأَرَاكَ هُمْ كَثِيرًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to, you know, make you strong, okay? Remember, O Prophet ﷺ, when Allah showed them to you, in, in the Prophet's dream, he showed them qalila, few. وَلَوْ أَرَاكَ هُمْ كَثِيرًا وَلَوْ أَرَا And he, he showed, uh, showed them to you as وَلَوْ أَرَاكَ هُمْ كَثِيرًا And see how Allah prepared the minds and the, the moral courage of the companions of the Prophet. لَوْ أَرَاكَ هُمْ كَثِيرًا O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and this should tell you the relationship, how much they believed in the Prophet. The Prophet's even sharing his dream. I had a dream, but they were few. So they don't they don't have that much power as it would look. أَرَاكَهُمْ كَثِيرًا If they had if Allah had shown them to you as many, لَفَشِلْتُمْ you would have lost courage. وَلَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ And you would have certainly have disputed with one another. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ سَلَّمْ but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to uh, wanted you to be saved or secured. And Allah knows deep down what's in your chest. And what this, the Prophet saw was right. Those people with the actual courage to really fight on the side of these tyrants. You know, they're standing there and they're saying, on who's our side? Who's there? Abu Jahl? The tyrant? Abu Lahab? The tyrant? Who's there? Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr who used to help us? Muhammad, who, who was known to help the people. So they, you know, they already had lost their fortitude and their moral courage. You know, the moral courage is extremely important in any battle. You have to go into the battle knowing that you're on the right side. You know, this is one of the things in human nature that Allah has put. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, إِذْ يُرِيكُهُمْ إِذْ now what's so interesting here is the Prophet saw them few in the dream and what happened is now when they see, physically seeing, they're seeing them less in their dream. Even though Allah could have helped them in the battle in so many other ways. But Allah chose this particular way, a very subtle way, but a very significant way of making it so that their hearts are secure and so that they have the moral courage to fight. Is yurikum kuhum is so Allah made it so when you met when you met them you saw them as few. You you Allah made them few in in your eyes. Why? So that Allah would make that happen which was already written. and all affairs return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made their test that was very, 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 very difficult a little bit easy by doing certain little, little things for them. And even though they couldn't run away from the battle, they still had to uh, give up their life. They put had to still put their life on stake. But Allah made gave them certain things to have that victory that was already written for them to have. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha laqeetum fi'atun fathbutu وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Oh, you people who believe, when you meet any party, any group, any any um, troops, right, that you're going to fight, right? فَثْبِتُوا Have firm stand. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ And remember Allah. كَثِيرًا A lot. Remember Allah, Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ This is the way to go into battle and remember Allah much. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you will be successful. وَأَتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا And obey Allah and His Messenger. And at that moment of duty, if you want to argue, argue later. 
but not during the time of the job. When you're on job, no argument, because that will destroy the morality of everyone in the group. Look, don't be arguing with one another, okay? فَتَفْشِلُوا if you do that, if you fall into argument with another on job, even if you disagree with the local Amir or with the Amir or with somebody in the Jama'ah, don't argue. It's better to have sabr because at that moment you will spoil it for everyone. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا If you do argue, you will lose your courage, your, your strength, meaning moral courage. وَتَزْحَبَ رِيهُكُمْ And what will happen? And you will... Uh, you know your your strength will uh, like your air will go away like right that that air will go away you'll lose the courage to keep moving forward wasbiru and have sabr instead have sabr if you have if you disagree with something you don't like something have sabr in allah sabirin allah is with the people allah is going to help the people that have sabr wala takunu kal ladina kharaju min diyarihim bataran and be, don't be like those people who came out of their homes, right? Uh, and this is referring to the, <coughs> don't be like the Quraysh, who came out of their houses to be shown, boasting and boasting and boasting, dancing, and, and because they were so sure they're going to win the battle. They were so sure they're going to win the battle. battle. To show off to mankind. Yusadduna an sabilillah. And t turning people away from the path of Allah. Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhit. And Allah has fully encompassed, fully encircled everything that you do. Wa is zayyina lahum al shaytanu a'malahum. Is zayyina lahum a'malu, shaytanu a'malahum. And shaytan had made their deeds look so beautiful to them. You know, dazzling exterior. This is what Iqbal calls it too. Dazzling exterior. It's like, it, there's a, it's glitter from outside, but it has real no value. It's just glitter. It just looks beautiful. But it's just, that's it. That's all there is. وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمِ مِنَ النَّاسِ And Shaitan said, لَا غَالِبَ كُمُ الْيَوْمَ مِنَ النَّاسِ There's no one in mankind that will defeat you today. وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ And I'm with you. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَتْ فِيَتَانِ When he saw now the two parties and he saw the angels on the other side. You know, in the Christian paradigm, the opposite of God is Satan. In the Islamic paradigm, the opposite of God is the... Uh, sorry, opposite of, uh, opposite of Satan, Shaitan is the angels. Okay? فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَتِ الْفِيَتَانِ when he saw the two groups and he saw the angels on the other side, I am free from the guilt of you people. I see that which you don't see. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe in taking revenge. So now shaitan brought them to the battlefield, but then he ran away. And over there, the believers experienced what? That the angels were with them and helping them throughout. So, and then what is the role of the munafiqin? The munafiqin that are nor here nor there, they have an outer uh, garb of Islam, but they don't have any real iman. Okay? And they're not willing to give nor support nor sacrifice anything for Islam. This They said, they, gave, they accepted Islam because that's what a large number of people in Medina were doing. They thought it to their best interest to do that. But, you know, these were the people that were also enticing behind the scenes to come out and kick Muhammad out of Medina because Abdullah bin Ubay, who was the foremost of them, he was going to be made the king. And they had just about agreed to make him the king. But then what happened is they believed in the Prophet. And so his whole plan of becoming the king of Medina was laid to waste. So those people who had kind of like accepted Islam on the outside but in the inside, they had no intentions of following Islam or being sacrificing for Islam, rather. And remember when the munafiqun said, And those people who had a disease in their heart, they were weak, weaker believers. These people have been destroyed by their deen. They've been deceived by 
uh, their deen, by their Islam. They've been deceived. They gave everything to the Prophet. They're willing to sacrifice everything for him. You know, what type of... Uh, who gives everything to a Prophet? Like this type, you know. وَمَنْ تَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ But the reality is whoever trusts in Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is Aziz, most powerful, most wise. لَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And if you were to see uh, when these, when the, those who rejected the truth, after knowing the truth, after seeing the truth, after experiencing the truth, and then still rejecting it, And you would see the angels beating their faces and their backs, saying, this is the punishment of the fire. Now, feel this fire, this feel this punishment. ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ ظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ This is because of what you have sent forward and Allah is not doing wrong to His servants. Allah didn't do anything wrong to His servants. كَدَعْبِ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ Like the people of, you know, and the traditions of the people of Fir'aun وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And those before them كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ they did. They denied these signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. فَأَخَذَهُمْ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ Allah also took them for their sins. In Allah لَقَوِيٌّ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ In Allah قَوِيٌّ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ Indeed, Allah is strong, severe in taking revenge. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يُكَ So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala here is saying, <coughs> this ayah is similar to the. Allah will not change a people until they change themselves. But over here, an, an, an additional aspect is uh, put forward. This is, why did this happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change, right? A ni'ma, he has given a people. A favor he has given a people. Allah will not change that favor. You had a limit, time limit, to accept the call of the Prophet. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you more than 10 years, right? Before the first installment of the punishment came. But now, now that the first installment has come, now things are going to continue in that way. Basically, this is one of the aspects of this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change a, a favor Allah has given to people. Until they change their attitude. You change your attitude, then Allah will take the favors away from you. Okay? And so, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ سَمْيُونَ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. The only difference is over there, it, it's talking, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيْرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيْرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ But here it's talking about how you have a positive state and are going to a negative state. And over there the intent is more going from a negative state to a positive state. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يُوكُ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنْفُسِهِمْ So now that you've denied the truth, and you've kept it denying the truth, something inside you has changed. And because that has changed, now the, many of the ni'mas have been taken away from you. And the first of the ni'mas that has been taken away from you is the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he was the biggest ni'mah that had come to them. كَدَعْبِ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ Like the traditions of Fir'aun وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And those before them كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ They had denied the ayat of Allah and this changed something inside and the ni'mas of Allah started to go away. It was like they were cursed. كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ فَأَحْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذَنُوبِهِمْ And then we destroyed them because of their sins. وَأَغْرَكْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنِ And we drowned Fir'aun وَكُلٌ and this uh, injustice of denying the truth after knowing it's the truth, right? And this changes something internally. Uh, and if it's done at a collective level, then it changes things at a collective level. <laughs> Indeed, the worst of those creatures are those who, in the Allah, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا are those people who deny the truth. And then they don't believe. They're just stubborn on not wanting to accept the truth. الَّذِي آهَدْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ ثُمَّ نَنْفُذُوا أَحْدَهُمْ فِي كُلِّ مَرَّةٍ وَهُمْ An example of this, of their changing internally. 
you know, Quraysh were a people known for keeping their word and being very, you know, generosity and all of that. Now, uh, those people that you made a uh, covenant with. And then they break their promises now every moment they get, every chance they get. And they don't have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, this ayah, more than the Quraysh, it's referring to the people behind the Quraysh. Those people that had a covenant with the Prophet ﷺ, and while having the veneer of the covenant on top, underneath, they're working against the Prophet ﷺ. And that is the, the Jews, the Jewish community in Medina. Those people who had a covenant with you and they were breaking the covenant behind your backs, basically. And they were not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, if it comes to a point where they break their covenant to the point that they're actually in the battlefield, besides just, you know, because they're sending letters to Quraysh, come on, hurry, 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 right? So, وَإِمَّا تَثْقَفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْحَرْبِ Oh, prophets, uh, so the Prophet is being told that and when you have dominance in the war, تَثْقَفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْحَرْبِ فَشَرِّدْ بِهِمْ Then what? فَشَرِّدْ بِهِمْ مَنْ خَلْفَهُمْ Give them a punishment, right? So that to the point that those that would be behind even them, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَرْ They would come, they would become a reminder for them. Give them such a punishment when you find them in the battlefield that th they wake up. They realize that what a bad mistake they've done by breaking their promise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this ayah is extremely interesting because I think that this is one of the two parts of the Quran that speak to the issue of what happened in 9-11 to some degree. Look at the wisdom Allah gives the Prophet sallallahu alayhi you know, one is there uh, the the Jewish communities writing letters to Quraysh, writing letters to Quraysh. But let's say there's a particular individual that's writing letters. About that has been said. If you find him, in, because what the uh, the Jewish community was saying, the uh, the Yehud of uh, Medina were saying to to Quraysh, if you attack from the outside, we'll attack from the inside. So that's being referred in the ayah before. Now, whether it's being done individually or at the level of the of the people. This is being distinguished, okay? If you see a deception, okay, or a betrayal is actually a better word that's over here. If you see betrayal at the at the at the you could say the national level, at the tribal level, they have a tr they have a contract with you. You have a promise with them. You have a covenant with them, and they're saying, look, look, we're not. You know, this is just a few individuals that are doing this. We as a whole, we're going to hold on to this covenant. You know, we can't control every crazy person in our town then you have then you can keep the covenant but if you fear that they as a whole have betrayed the covenant then to what instead of like pretending that you have this promise with each other and you're continuing the situation no then throw the covenant back to them meaning abrogate the covenant first so that you know where they know they don't have that um, understanding that you know that they're they're going to be able to put this veneer of a fake promise on top and a fake covenant on top and continue to do things under underhandedly. No, then throw the back and abrogate the promise upon them. In Allah la yuhibul khainin. Allah subhanahu wa taala does not love people that are traitors. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَبَقُوا And don't think those people who rejected the truth they have. You know, they have won in any way. They have no escape. I'm sorry, today my dyslexia is making it hard for me to read some of the verses. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now when you're in that phase of your da'wah, where you have a jama'ah, you have a base, you don't have a state yet, but you have a jama'ah, and you can make treaties and covenants, and, and, and you have some, you know, uh, stability as a power, um, then... Uh, then you must at that time look after your security, your defense mechanisms, your offensive mechanisms, even min quwa, because the best defense is offense, and the world has learned this in the arms race very much so. So gather as much strength as you can min quwa. This for any civilization, 
is extremely, extremely important. Survival is uh, and ribat al khayf and the the horses you know that you have that, those horses that are prepared for war basically and uh, you know horses are interesting because um, they they they're kind of like iconic they're even the prophet has talked about horses having baraka so even in the modern times there would be advantages of having steeds of horses uh, in the army because of how it affects the heart and Allah refers to the turhabuna bihi so that you, uh, you, Allah puts fear into the hearts of the enemies by this so there's certain animals you could say you know that that put fear like some people grow up with the fear of dogs so if they know dogs are coming that's going to put fear in their hearts regardless of what gun they're carrying or bombs they're carrying but ribat al khayl this is also a, uh, to point to the fact that you know this uh, the whole world was fighting on horses right and then we have this small space of two three hundred years or less where we're going to fight with these big big technologies and then this is going to come down and we're going to fight with horses again in the end of times so it's important to be good at fighting with technology but it is as important if not more important particularly where we're sitting in history to be good at fighting with low technology okay they're your they're the enemies of Allah and your enemies and there are other nations other than them you don't know them Allah knows them but if you you need to prepare this because they're going to be coming at you so you need to this is the main and the illa is it depends this should be a deterrent from any problems and if they attack you then you have enough strength to defend yourself how is this going to happen how are they going to gather the weapons how are they going to uh, make the weapons how are they going to do all this well it's going to happen only if people spend their time their energy their sacrifice themselves for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the uh, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you give in the cause of Allah Min shay'in fi sabilillah yuwafi ilaykum. Allah will give it back to you. So on the one side, you're giving to the poor, to the orphans, to the to the needy, right? You have to do that. But then on the other side, you're spending for the cause, for the ideology, for the ideas of Islam, to for those to spread, to build the institutions, so on and so forth. Yuwafi ilaykum wa antum la tuzlamun, and you will not be wronged in the least bit. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala says. فَإِنْجَنَهُ لِلسِّلْمِ And if they incline towards peace, فَجْنَهْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then you also incline towards peace, and then you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ هُوَ السَّمْيُونَ عَلِيمُ He is the one who is listening, and he is the one who has all knowledge. Right? إِنْ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَخْدَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَسْبُكَ اللَّهِ If they want to, you know, deceive you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? فَإِن فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهِ Allah is enough for you. هو الذي أيدك بنصره. Do you not see that Allah has already helped you with His help? والمؤمنين and the believers with the believers. Okay. So وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ and with the believers. So Allah has helped you and Allah has helped you with the believers. وَأَلَفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ and more than that, He's combined your hearts together into one brotherhood. Right. You, you, and and who is in the center of this brotherhood? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم. If you had spent everything, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on earth, everything, ما ألفت بين قلوب قلوبهم. You wouldn't have combined their hearts. These are very different people. On the one side is Quraysh, these people that are into business and this type, uh, and even royalty, and then you have the farmers on the other side, the Ansar. So, ولكن الله ألف بين قلوبهم قلوبهم. And but Allah is the one who combines their hearts. إن الله عزيز حكيم. Indeed, Allah is all powerful, all wise. يا أيها النبي حسبك الله. O Prophet of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, Allah is so is sufficient for you. من ومن تبعك من المؤمنين. And whoever follows you amongst the believers. صلى الله عليه وسلم. يا أيها النبي Hadid al Mu'minina al al Qital. O Prophet, entice and urge and incite the believers over Qital, over battle. Okay? Because 
Why? Because you're in the middle of the battle. Now something very important. Very, 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 very important. In yakun minkum ashruna sabiruna yaglibuna mi'atayn. If there are amongst you 20, okay, uh, who are bel true believers, okay, so this is very important because this shows the maximum and the minimum number. So the maximum number comes first when the Iman was strong. But then as more people are entering Islam, the quality of Iman was slowly decreasing because you don't have no more Abu Bakr's and Omar's, those people that accepted Islam and took persecution for 10 years. So the quality of the people that are coming in later on is decreasing. So Allah's promise is decreasing according to that. Okay? The Prophet ﷺ did say, لَن يَغْلِبْ مِنْ إِثْنَةَ عَشْرَ مِنْ الْقِلَّةِ Twelve thousand will not be overcome because of less in being having less numbers. Meaning it would be maybe an issue of Iman or internal betrayal or something else. لَن يَغْلِبُ إِثْنَةَ عَشْرَ أَلْفًا مِنْ الْقِلَّةِ 12,000, a, a troops of 12,000 will not be overcome of the believers because of lack of numbers. But over here, what is more important, it doesn't mean you get 12,000 and start fighting. So don't misunderstand that. You have to do that one to the point where a critical number comes and joins you. You have to. And the proof of that is this ayah. You have to win the hearts and the minds of the people first before you can take any other step. If 20 of you are sabir, have good iman, strongest level of iman, you will overcome 200. If there are 100 of you, right? If you have 100, then they will overcome 10 times as much. Okay? Which is, 100 will overcome 1,000. But then what happened? Even... Allah has made the burden light to you now. Okay? And Allah has known, Allah has, knows that there is weakness amongst you now. Because your iman has gone down as more people are entering. Now a hundred will overcome two hundred. A thousand will overcome two thousand. Wallahu ma'asabirin, Allah is with those people who have patience. So this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will help you, but you have to meet certain conditions because that process of doing da'wah, getting humiliated, getting your ego crushed, taking all the persecution, that is a big part of your training of your soul. Okay? To do that but yet not become victimized. Ma kana li nabiyyin an yakuna lahu asra. Now, this is a very important subject. It is not for a prophet to take any prisoners of war. Until he has complete control of the land and the territory that he's fighting in. You see, the Prophet ﷺ took prisoners. And over here, Allah is telling the Prophet that you shouldn't have taken prisoners. Okay? So, over here, a few things can be made clear. Number one, Surah Al-Muhammad had been revealed already. And the rule already had been given in Surah Al-Muhammad, which was revealed actually before Surah Al-Baqarah, that if you get prisoners of war, you have to, uh, you have to massacre them, you have to kill them. But because you know Abu Bakr had a soft heart, and the Prophet had a soft heart, when they got these prisoners of war, now the prisoners of war are two men and women. If they're women, Malak Malakat Aymanukum, they they get to live and they get into to integrate into society. Okay. But the men had to be massacred to make it clear that any attack on Islam will be taken very, very seriously. So, hatta yuschana fil ard until a, they are they are made to uh, feel the defeat and be massacred on earth. And so, when they took them as prisoners of war, what were they going to do? They were going to do. They were going to use them as uh, some benefit to. Omar was of the opinion that every relative of Quraysh that has become Muslim and is in the Medina, that is closest to any of these people, he sh they should all kill them one by one. And Abu Bakr, uh, the Prophet, felt no. But because that particular ayah, which will come into uh, to Muhammad, was read by the Prophet in a way to allow leniency, you can say. Okay? 
يسخن في الأرض يريد تريدون أرض الدنيا do you want uh, the the luxuries of life you want money by selling these people back right والله يريد الآخرة but Allah wants to hear after والله عزيز الحكيم Allah is the one who is all powerful and he knows he's the one with wisdom that would have been better for you now you made the decision you did it that's fine but it would have been better if you would have massacred them so now this became a permanent rule here. So uh, the prisoners of war were treated in a certain way, but you'll see the the um, the rulings on this as. But this is as far as as far as the Battle of Badr was concerned. Lo la kitabu min Allah sabaka sabaka. If uh, a uh, a a commandment from Allah had not proceeded, meaning if Allah had already not given you a you could say a license before this. Okay. So if Allah had not sent a surah, kitab here means surah. If Allah had not already sent a surah, min Allah is sabaka lamasakum fi ma akhthum adabun alim. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala, if you if if Allah had not already sent a a a, a prescription about this, about uh, the releasing of prisoners of war, right? In if it had not already come before. And Allah would have taken you to fi makhastum adabun alim. You would have been in a grievous punishment from Allah. Now, I just want to only focus on that particular ayah, so you can understand how the Prophet interpreted it and how Allah was interpreting it. Okay. Wa ida laqib. This is Surah Al Muhammad. Wa ida laqib laqi tum al ladina kafaru fadarbu rikab. And when you meet the people who have denied the truth, then strike them on their necks. Hatta ida ashantumuhum, the same word, ashantumuhum. Okay, this is the same word as uh, that came over here. Hatta yuth khanafil ard. Okay, so this word had already come in and given these instructions. So hatta ida ashantumuhu fa ashadul wathaf, and then you tie them in the most severe time. Fa imma manna baadu wa imma fada. Then over here the the verse says imma manna you can show them favor or imma fada or you can ransom them hatta tada harbu auzaraha until the earth or until the har the war uh, li lifts its burden meaning the you can interpret this ayah in two ways either you can say strike their necks until until Strike their necks until the uh, burden of war is removed, and then after you have completely come over the earth, then ashadul uh, uh, wathaq. Uh, then either you show them favor and or ransom them. So you either the eye can be interpreted as you you go, and which is what Allah meant: start the war, finish the war. When the battle is over, then you can ransom them. Or show them favor, let them just go at that point. But the Prophet took it as, okay, uh, show them favor and ransom them. This is actually referring to the time between the um, the war. So, فَإِذَا لَكُمْ لَقِيتُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَضَرْبُ الرِّقَابِ حَتَّى إِذَا أَثْخَنْتُمُوهُمْ Until, strike them next, until you have completely overcome them. Overcome them in the sense of the war, not just the battle. فَأَشَدُّ الْوَثَاقِ Tie them firmly. وَأَمَّا بَعْدَ بَعْدُ After you have... بَعْدُ here is referring to after the war is over. مَنَّوْ بَعْدُ وَإِمَّا فَذَا Whether you can show them a favor or you can ransom them. So this was... The Prophet chose to have the interpretation of this ayah that was lenient, that was less strict, okay? So this is an interesting hermeneutics lesson also um, for people, okay? That the Prophet would look at an ayah and look at what is the most lenient interpretation of this ayah. Like, for example, when it was said, Allah will not forgive them even if you do tawbah for them 70 times. So the Prophet said, okay, fine, I'll do more than 70 times, right? So, وَلَوْ لَا كِتَابُ مِنَ اللَّهِ If it had not already been decreed, that verse that I just showed you in Surah Muhammad, if that had not come, لَمَسَّكُمْ فِي مَا أَخَزْتُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Then Allah would have given you a punishment for what you took, meaning of the 
ransom and so on and so forth. فَكُلُوا مِمَّا غَنِمْتُمْ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا So now eat from whatever you got from the spoils of war, halalan tayyiba. Now the Prophet, uh, the Prophet took for the government, you can say, the khilafa, as I mentioned before also, and for himself, and for the orphans, and for the, you know, he took one-fifth. Four-fifths went to the mujahideen, the people that were fighting. This law will be a little bit uh, changed in the time of Omar radiallahu anh because you can't just conquer all of Iraq and all of Egypt and give the land also, you know. So you'll see that also when that issue comes up. Ya qul ya nabi say O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liman, liman fi, fi aydikum min al-asra in, in ya'lam Allah fi qulubihim khayran yu تِيكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Now, Umar was of the opinion, look, we're going to let these people go, they're going to go back, and they're going to fight us again. So, it's better we just kill them, eliminate the, the fitna now, than to deal with these people again later on. One thing that's very important to keep in mind is that you have to remember, these were all family members. The people, the prisoners of war, they were family members. And so now that these uh, prisoners of war have been caught, now you have to do fida, you have to ransom them. And so the husband of the daughter of the Prophet was also amongst the prisoners. Abbas, the, the uncle of the Prophet, he was also amongst the prisoners. Now, you know, it's a matter of law. You have to treat all the prisoners the same. It, 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 in fact, uh, there are some uh, scholars and some uh, interpreters, some people who believe that Abbas had actually accepted Islam, but he didn't have the courage to uh, say it, and he, that was one of the reasons that he was caught. So, Ya Nabi Kul Liman Fi Aydikum, say to these people, because now they're saying, oh, well, you know, I didn't really mean to come to the battle, or I have kind of like already accepted Islam, so then why do I have to? you know, have somebody pay for me to get free, I'm actually with you, I was never really with them, I had no choice, all these things that were being said. <coughs> and on top of that, they were all family members. So, and, and they had feelings for these people. These were not like their enemies that, you know, people that of a different color, or of a different, these were their own people. And when when the Prophet saw Abbas, he's been tied really tight, the Prophet said, because the same rule has to be done for all of them. The Prophet said, loosen the um, the ropes for all of the prisoners, the Prophet said. And when the ransoming was happening, you know, Zainab was married to uh, one of the uh, one of the prisoners of, of, of war. So what did she send as her as her ransom? She sent the necklace of Khatija radiallahu anha. And imagine the Prophet when he saw that necklace of Khatija radiallahu anha, how he felt at that time. That my daughter is sending this necklace of her mother, my wife, who had been so loyal to me, but she's trying to free her husband, right? And that uh, became an, uh, an interesting issue. So th these were real people with real human emotions, with real connections, that are now in this battle between right and wrong. So, So now, law is law. It has to be followed, okay? So whether whatever was in your heart, Allah knows it. So, Ya أَيُّهَا النَّبِي كُلْ لِمَنْ فِي أَيْدِيكُمْ مِنَ الْأَسْرَى Whoever is in your hands amongst the prisoners of war, in, in, in يَعْلَمِ اللَّهَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ خَيْرًا If Allah knows something good about you that's in your heart, يُوَفِّيكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أَخَذْتَ مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, Allah will give you something better for then compared to what you're giving to ransom yourself. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ And Allah may even forgive you. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Allah is all-forgiving, all-merciful. وَإِنْ يُرِيدُوا خِيَانَتَكَ And O Prophet ﷺ, if they want to betray you, فَقَدْ خَانُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ قَبْلِ They've already betrayed Allah before by not accepting the truth after Allah gave all the signs مِنْ قَبْلِ before. فَأَمْكَنَ مِنْهُمْ 
the pro Allah has given you power over them. Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah is all knowing and all wise. Inna ladina amanu. Inna ladina inna ladina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu bi amwalihim wa anfusihim fi sabilillah. Wa ladina awa wa nasaru ulaika ba'dhum awliya ba'd. So this is talking about the muhajirin and ansar. And another verse like this, because with the Tawbah and Sutan Anfal are twin surahs, this will come over there, to, uh, the same theme will come over there too. As-sabiquna min al-muhajirin wal ansar Those people that were the foremost amongst the uh, muhajirin and ansar. Right? So this is this, but over here their description is being given. That what was their iman like? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَحَاجَرُوا Those people who believed and did hijrah وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And they did jihad with their wealth and with their self, peace of Allah, in the path of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آوَوْا Those who gave you protection وَنَصَرُوا And gave you support أُولَئِكَ بَعْدُهُ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدْ They are friends of one another. Over there before it was said, you couldn't bring their hearts together except if Allah had willed. Now over here Allah is saying they are protectors of one another. Well, and these are the people who carried the flag of Islam even after the Prophet passed away, right? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يُهَاجِرُوا وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ And those people who didn't do hijrah, they have no protection. They're, because they're, they, they were, of course the exceptions is already mentioned before. But those people who didn't do hijrah, then مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Hatta yuhajiru. They have to do hijrah. They have to come to the Prophet and become a resource for him if they're really serious. Okay. Fa in instans fa in fi din and if they help you in the deen, in the cause of the deen, for the purpose of the deen, for the establishment of the deen, for the establishment of the khilafah, if they want to really bring Islam fi din fa alaikum nasru. Then uh, for you is uh, then you are if they want to help you, then you are to help them. Right? إِلَّا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِثَاقٍ Except if there is a treaty between you and, and the people that the person that's doing hijrah from, there's a treaty between you, don't break the treaty. Okay? وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٍ And Allah has full insight into what you do. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْدَهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدٍ Those people who reject the truth are friends of one another. إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُنْ فِئَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ those people that have rejected the truth, they're allies of one another. And if you do not, فَإِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ Okay. إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ So you have to obey these laws. If you have a covenant between two uh, tribes, and somebody writes you a letter, an individual writes you a letter, they're really hurting me, and so on and so forth. Now you can't just take your armies to support that person because he's being hurt by the people of his tribe. You know, there's there's a way of doing things and there's a time for things. And this is part of the test of Allah that you have to have sabr and there's a time for things. So, If you just randomly, for every person that's going to say, come help me, and you're going to go and help them without looking into if you have peace treaty with them or don't have peace treaty. Also, another issue was the issue of fidya, giving, you know, fidya. Fidya was not only given by the the tribe necessarily, but also the 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 Halif. So they 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 had these, you know, one tribe is protecting another tribe. So then they all had to like participate and all these things. So whatever it was, uh, whatever it was the contract, you have to stay according to that. Okay, and whatever was the understanding, you have to stay according to that. You can't just emotionally. They are friends of one another, but you have to stay with stick with the law. Okay, إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ There would be a big fitna on the earth, وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ and a big fasad. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ This is the real sign of Iman. Islam is five things. Shahada, Salah, Sayyam, you know, uh, Zakat, and Hajj. But Iman is two things. Okay, is conviction, real belief. It's as if you see the unseen as real. The unseen has become real. And now, that's the input. The output is, struggle for the deen. Because now you don't mind struggling, because now you know you're going to the next world anyway. Those people believe and do hijrah and jihad fi sabilillah. Those people that give protection. These are the people that 
have, are true, true, true believers. Why? Because they've struggled. They've shown, they, it's not just words that they gave, like the people who couldn't do hijrah. Most of them were people that may be inclined towards Islam, but they weren't willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. For them is forgiveness and a very generous uh, risk. Now, so over here two things are being mentioned. Number one, those people who did hijrah afterwards, after the initial hijrah, they came afterwards. So, and number two, that even though they have become a brotherhood, <coughs> but society is not going to be running on brotherhood. Society has to run on law. And law will be based upon who is near to who, who in terms of law inheritance and other laws. You have to see who is near who, right? Who's a relative of who. So that will be looked at. Those who believed after, وَهَاجَرُوا and did hijrah after, وَجَاهَدُوا maakum and then they did jihad with you. فَأُولَٰئِكَ minkum they're with you. Even if they came later, it doesn't matter. They're with you, they're in the struggle, they are part of the struggle, okay? In the book of Allah, in the law of Allah, right, it is a matter of laws of inheritance and all these things are not a matter of, oh, you know, Abu Bakr and Umar are really close, so they start inheriting from one another. No, it's not like this. The inheritance will be according to the book of Allah, right, according to the precepts that are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الرحاب, as far as the relationships, Some are closer to others in the book of Allah, in the in the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alim. Allah has the knowledge to Allah has the knowledge of all things. Alhamdulillah bi izzatihi wa jalali salihat. Alhamdulillah in that we have finished uh Sutul Anfal. Now we go to Tawbah. Sutul Tawbah is about 95 ayat in the 10th juz. Before I finish this, I do want to show you this. So you have Sutul Anfal to Sutul Tawbah, or, okay? Then you have the issue of Badr, and then the war, and then it ended with the issue of the prisoners of war, right? So now we're gonna go into Sutul Tawbah. So Sutul Tawbah, like I said, is the last in is installment of the punishment of Quraysh, and they've been given now only, they have, you know, Three months to decide, Islam or not Islam, or face death. And this would come in replacement for the punishments that used to come by the prophets previously to, uh, to other prophets before the last prophet. The last prophet had to do things based upon the world of cause and effect as much as possible. So let us inshallah now continue on the Sutta Tawbah. So now we start Sutta Tawbah. Now this surah is very important. The first six ayat... Uh, is basically a declaration of independence. Now, there are two, you can say people are of three groups. People that have a contract with the Prophet, but there's no time limit. There was, it was a, just a general contract. We won't fight with each other. A contract you had with tribes, but they had a certain term, a certain time limit until when this contract would be. And number three are those people in w with which there was no contract, tribes that had no uh, covenant or agreement or treaty with the Prophet Sallallahu Number one. Number two. This was the Prophet coming to Mecca back in the same way when a Prophet of Allah would have given witness to the people, shown the miracles to the people, given time to the people to think about accepting Islam. If they kept rejecting and rejecting and rejecting, then finally, it was the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it happened in the time of Lut, as it happened in the time of Nuh, you know, and other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after finally rejecting, like Fir'aun, then you will be erased. Okay, now here was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving last chance, last warning, last chance. If you don't accept Islam, because for Jazirat al-Arab, the rule was it has to be all, it, you have to either accept Islam, or face the consequences of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this time because he was the last prophet through the hands of the believers. Okay? And through the hands of the Prophet sallallahu himself. So now let's continue. Bara'atum min Allahi wa rasulihi. This is why this surah doesn't have uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in it. Okay? Bara'atum min Allahi wa rasulihi. Allah and His Messenger are free. Okay? There's a declaration of independence. 
إِلَى الَّذِينَ آَحَدْتُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ with the, with the mushrikeen who have had a treaty with you. Which treaty? The type of treaty that doesn't have term limits. Just it was a general treaty as it mentioned in the previous surah, Surah Al-Anfal, when it was said that if you fear uh, a betrayal for them, just give it back to them and openly declare, okay, there's no more treaty between us. This is what's happening here. Also, very important. It was Abu Bakr who had gone for Hajj. And now, Ali radiallahu an, the Prophet, six, these six, first six ayat were revealed of Sikta Tawbah, and the Prophet had sent Ali go and declare these six ayat to the public in the time of Hajj for everyone to hear what the new declaration is. Abu Bakr was the Amir when Ali radiallahu an came, and this is to show you the relationship between Abu Bakr and Ali from from even before the Prophet had passed away, the respect they had for each other. Abu Bakr asked first, have you been sent as the Amir or are you Ma'mur? Ali said, no, 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 you are the Amir. The Prophet kept Abu Bakr as the Amir. Both in Hajj time, which was this Hajj, which is called Hajj al-Akbar in the Surah, as you'll see, or, and also, when the Prophet was passing away, he was leading the Salah. So, in this way, uh, Abu Bakr was indicated to be the leader of the Muslims just as this conquest, uh, meaning the Prophet had become victor over uh, over Mecca. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَةً As people enter into Islam in crowds, you see, uh, you know, as the victory and help of Allah comes, you see people entering into Islam into, in crowds. So, بَرَأَتُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِلَى الَّذِينَ آَحَدْتُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So those people of the Mushrikeen that you had a contract with, a treaty with, but there was no term limits, now that's, we're declaring for a contract like that, you can declare, okay, we have now uh, abrogated that contract. We're no longer holding on to that contract. فَصِيحُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرُ You have four months to travel the earth. وَعْلَمُوا Know it well. أَنَّكُمْ غَيْرَ مُعْجِزِ اللَّهِ You cannot make Allah weak. Okay? You cannot frustrate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَنَّ اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مُخْزِي الْكَافِرِينَ But instead Allah is the one who has now weakened and, and subdued the people who have been rejecting the truth. You have one last chance to believe now. You have four months, just like you know when there's talaq, you have four months. So you have four months to decide. And to t if you had not taken the message of Prophet Muhammad seriously, now you have a chance to take the message of the Prophet seriously and decide once and for all. أَذَانُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ so now Abu Bakr was there, Ali was there, Ali now was reading these verses to everyone openly. You have four months, accept, accept, accept Islam or face the consequences. A declaration from Allah and His Messenger, إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ on the, on the Hajj al-Akbar, which is Hajj. Hajj al-Asghar is Umrah, what we usually call Umrah. There is a misinformation that Hajj al-Akbar is a Hajj on Friday. أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah is free from the people that are pagans. وَرَسُولُهُ and his messenger. فَإِن تُبْتُ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you repent to Allah, it is better for you. فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ غَيْرَ مُعْجِزِ اللَّهِ Now, no, if you turn away, then know that you cannot frustrate Allah. You cannot, you cannot make Allah weak. وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And give the good tidings to the people who reject the truth. For them is a painful punishment. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آَهَدْتُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Except for those people that you have a covenant with them, but the type of covenant here is being referred to, is that there was a certain term. Okay? So those people that have a certain term, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَنْقُصُوكُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَمْ يَذْهَرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَحَدْ فَأَتِمُّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَحْدَهُمْ إِلَى مُدَّتِهِمْ So those people that have a term limit, and لَمْ يَنْقُصُوكُمْ شَيْئًا done anything in their contract that it shows that they've betrayed their contract and they haven't fought against you ahad at any at any time then complete the term of the treaty of the contract that has that specified time in Allah yuhibbul muttaqin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people that show taqwa now after these four months are gone, فَاقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ This is the harsh words. Now imagine Ali reading this to all of mankind. 
on behalf of the Prophet وسلم, because he was the closest relative to the Prophet, he was reading on behalf of the Prophet as an ambassador now to all of Arabia, you have four months. And grab them, and stop them, and you know, put uh, things before them. And stop and, and sit in every ambush to get them. If they establish the prayers, give the zakat, let them go. In Allah Ghafur Rahim, indeed Allah is Al Ghafur Al Rahim. He's most forgiving, most merciful. But you know, maybe there's some people they still haven't thought seriously about the message. They want to know, okay, what is really the message of the Prophet? وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ So if one of them seeks protection from you, so give him protection, okay? حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ Let him listen to the book of Allah. This is, you know, the da'wah as we've been mentioning, the da'wah, the tool of da'wah of the Prophet was always through Qur'an. Qur'an, Qur'an, Qur'an. The message of the Qur'an, the Qur'an is the message of the Prophet ثُمَّ Ma'mana. It's not like you made him listen to the Quran and say, okay, now decide, do you want to be Muslim or not? No. You let him listen to the Quran, then you let him go to his place of safety, let him decide with ease. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ This is because there are people who don't know, because there are some people, they, they were, you know, maybe, uh, uh, they, were, they were swayed by the people, they never paid attention. So some of those people, let them listen to the message, let them seriously think about it, and then let them accept the message based upon that. كَيْفَ يَكُونُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ آهَدْتُمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَعِنْدَ الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آهَدْتُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, repeating the point that was previously mentioned, كَيْفَ يَكُونُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ آهَدٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ how can the mushrikeen have a contract with Allah of any sort? وَعِنْدَ الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آهَدْتُمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Except for those people. Now this ayah number, like I said, the first group is, the, what Ali read was from ayah number one to ayah number six. Now number seven is a little bit difficult to understand and a lot of people and a lot of um, modern mufassirin have become confused on this verse. What happened was that, you know, Hudaybiyah was done. Now, when Hudaybiyah was done, the entire Arab world divided into two groups, those that will be with the people of the Prophet. So the Prophet and those that aligned themselves politically with the Prophet, they were betting on the pro fact that the Prophet would ha ultimately have the upper hand. And then those people that were ultimately betting that no Quraysh would have the upper hand. So whole of Arabia was divided into two. And so these tribes became Halif, okay? Uh, Halif of the Prophet وسلم, or the Halif of Quraysh. Now, if anybody on the side of the Prophet broke a covenant, it would be, then it would uh, be a covenant breaking uh, against Quraysh. And if anybody of the Quraysh or any of the tribes with Quraysh broke the covenant, it would be a, a breaking of the covenant with the Prophet, okay, of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah that was made. Now, this has to be kept in mind. What happened is one of the Quraysh, uh, one of the tribes under the Quraysh broke the treaty, the 10 year peace treaty the Prophet had with Hudaybiyah. Uh, after meaning in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the 10 year peace contract they had. Now, like the Quran has already mentioned in al fad that if, if you feel that you know they've betrayed their peace, uh, their contract with you, you can just give it back to them and declare to them openly, right? Rather than keeping this treaty and pretending like okay, we're still friends, no, just tell them it's over. Now, because the Quraysh had uh, one of the tribes under Quraysh had broken the treaty, now Abu Sufyan traveled from Makkah and came to Medina. Hoping that, what? Hoping that he can confirm with the Prophet that the treaty is not broken. Okay? So this was a very critical moment for Abu Sufyan and for the movement of the Prophet, as you'll see. So here's the leader of Quraysh. He's coming. He, he's the leader of Quraysh. And you know, these are relatives, a lot of these people, including the wife of the Prophet Wasallam. She's a daughter of Abu Sufyan. So Abu Sufyan goes to the house of his daughter, hoping he can maybe convince her to talk on his, you know, to to intercede on his behalf that, look, let's keep the treaty going. But what happened is when he came, he felt his daughter mistreated him because the bed of the Prophet, uh, Umm al-Habiba, she wrapped it up and told her father that she he can't sit until she wraps up the bed. And, and he said, is it because I'm not worthy of the bed or the bed is not worthy of me? And she said, no, this is the bed of the Prophet. You're not worthy of it because you're a najas, you're a mushrik. 
So he saw that, you know, he, he doesn't have, and he was trying to con get the Prophet, he went to, even went to the Prophet, and the Prophet stayed silent. The Prophet didn't say, I, I'm going to keep the covenant. He didn't say, I'm going to break the covenant. He stayed st silent. So he went back now knowing that it is just a matter of time when now the Prophet, because now he has more people, because this time of Hudaybiyah, gave the Prophet time to do make a lot of strategical moves that gave him a lot of strength. Now one of them was, this is, it was after Hudaybiyah that the Prophet started sending the letters to the Roman Empire and to the different empires, to the Persian Empire and so on and so forth, okay? So he started making a lot of political moves and a lot of people started aligning with the Prophet. And so the Prophet's strength is way more than two, two years or so back when they made the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So now Abu Sufyan, feared that if, Mount, if now Muhammad comes towards Mecca, he will be super powerful. And he was right, because the Prophet came with an army of 10,000. So now keeping this in mind, ayah number 7 becomes easier. كَيْفَ يَكُونُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَحَدٌ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْدَ رَسُولِ How uh, did the mushrikeen make a covenant with Allah and, and with the Prophet of Allah? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أَحَدْتُمْ How would you make, uh, sorry, how would you make a covenant? Because after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, everybody was divided. So, كَيْفَ يَكُونَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَحَدٌ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ How can there be a treaty with the people of uh, uh, the pagans, meaning the, uh, the people that worship idols, وَعِنْدَ الرَّسُولِ And with the Messenger of Allah. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أَحَدْتُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Except for the people that you already made a covenant with regarding in Masjid al-Haram, meaning Treaty of Hudaybiyah. فَمَسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ If they keep their treaty, you keep your treaty. Okay, in Allah you hibbul muttaqin. Allah loves those people that fear Allah. Don't go around breaking your treaties. You made a treaty, but now, like I said, they already broke their treaty. Okay, but Allah is preparing the Muslims for that time where they will have to make and uh, get ready for a war or an offensive against Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa taala then says. كَيْفَ إِذَا يَظْهَرُ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا يَرْكُبُ فِيكُمْ وَلَا 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 how is it that you know if if how is it that when when right they if they had power if they had the control to overtake you they would not keep their pact la yarqabu fikum illa wa la dhimma they would not keep their pact of relationships with you they would not care whose uncle you are and whose son you are and even though you're from the same family they wouldn't have these reservations illa wa la dhimma nor would they keep their pact of protection that they would have made with you they try to make you happy with their mouths. But their hearts are averse to it. Most of them are evildoers. They have purchased the life. Uh, they, they have purchased the signs of Allah for a small price. Meaning they have they have sold themselves out in regards to the deen of Allah. This is what they've shown. Why? They used to hire people to sing and tell stories so people wouldn't listen to the Prophet, but they'd listen to these stories. You know, they did character assassination of the Prophet ﷺ. They, all these propagandas against the Prophet ﷺ, kicked the Prophet and his companions out of their houses, tried to humiliating the Prophet and trying to humiliate the message. Right? Trying to find aib, uh, some defect in the message which will come now. How evil it is what they do. They would not keep their relationships with any of the believers, nor the contract of protection. They're willing to cross in all bounds. They are people who've crossed all bounds. But okay, you have one last chance now. Uh, but this is not referring to the last chance that I was mentioning. But, you know, that's coming. It's coming. Because these ayat were revealed, ayat number seven and up till here, and uh, a few of the other verses, they revealed uh, before uh, the um, conquest of Mecca, but, you know, in the time when Abu Sufyan had come to try to renew the pact, and the Prophet had essentially refused. If they repent, establish the prayers, give zakat, they would become your brothers in the deen. And we may clear our ayat for people that would know. And they have broken their promises after rectifying them. And they have tried to find, you know, uh, they have found, tried to put down, to humiliate, uh, put a ta'na, you could say, 
you know, trying to show the, uh, try to make deficient your deen, trying to humiliate your deen. So this is before the conquest of Mecca. These ayat fight with the leaders of Kufr. Who are the leaders of Kufr? Quraysh. They were, you know, the custodians of the Kaaba. They were the custodians of the Hajj at that time, because up till now Hajj was still happening under the Quraysh, according to their uh, traditions. They have no ayman. Uh, they have no promises. You could say. They don't keep true to their promises, right? They make promises, they break promises. They're your friends today and they're, they're, they're your enemies tomorrow according to whatever the times of the dictate, uh, whatever the times dictate, according to that. وَلَا تُقَاتِلُوا قَوْمًا نَكَثُوا أَيْمَانَهُمْ Sorry, أَلَا تُقَاتِلُوا Why do you not? قَوْمًا نَكَثُوا أَيْمَانَهُمْ Why do you not fight, fight with the people that have broken the covenant? It is possible that when Abu Sufyan went... <coughs> some of the people were saying, you know, the leader of Quraysh has come, after all, we should have rectified it. It would have been better to have peace rather than being in a perpetual state of war again, and so on and so forth. So, over here, it is preparing the minds of the Muslims that, you know, the main purpose of the Prophet is to establish the deen. And to establish the deen, he has to take over Mecca, he has to remove the idols, he has to purify the Kaaba, just like Ibrahim purified it, Right? And then uh, he has to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has to set that, show that example of what Islam looks like. That will not happen for all of Arabia until the Prophet takes over Makkah. So when it was convenient for Muslims and their self-interest, they made treaties. When it was convenient and uh, and and for the for the better for the self interest of Islam to not rectify the treaties to not renew the treaties, the Prophet did not sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this was based upon what is better for Islam at that particular time, without breaking your word and oaths like these people were. What is wrong with you? Do not fight a people that have already broken their co their covenant with you. These people, they're the ones who took out the Prophet, and they're the ones who started these issues. They're the ones who started, you know, these wars. Do you fear them? Allah is the one who has more right that you fear Him if you are truly believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is that part. That part of the Prophet's mission where he is to act as a witness over the punishment of the others unless they believe. This is being, Allah will punish them. Allah will punish them through your hands now. Because he's the last prophet, no miracles are coming. There's no manna salwa or punishments coming to prove that this was the, now it will be through your hands and through your hard work. يُخْزِيهِمْ وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَيَشْفِي صُدُورَ الْقَوْمَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَيَخْزِيهِمْ and Allah will humiliate them وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah will help them وَيَشْفِي صُدُورِ الْقَوْمِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and Allah will heal the hearts of the believers after all, they were humiliating Islam, making fun of Islam. So now this will be a type of healing for the believers. Over here, it would be important to mention that uh, there were also Muslims in Mecca. If you remember in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, uh, Treaty, Treaty of Hudaybiyah towards the end, <coughs> some of the believers, they asked the Prophet for help. <coughs> so this... Muslims taking over Mecca would relieve them of their distress and it would be a healing for them. So this can, uh, this also has that meaning. And over here Allah emphasizes again, يُذْحَبْ غَيْذَ الْقُلُوبِهِمْ So Allah will remove the anger, the rage in their hearts, the believers, because they've been through a lot of torture. They've been through a lot. وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءَ And Allah will turn to whoever He wants. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And over here now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, now this ayah again is repeating, you know, do you not think that Allah will test you and test you and test you and test you? So, am hasibtum an tatrak an tutraku. Do you think you'll be left without being tested? Right? Walamma ya'lam Allah. And yet Allah has not made it clear. Alladhina jahadu minkum wal... Those people that will struggle amongst you for the cause of Islam. 
ولم يتخذوا من دون الله ولم يتخذوا من دون الله ولا رسوله ولا المؤمنين وليجا and those people who will firmly commit themselves to Allah and his messenger and the believers right as their intimate friends wallahu khabirun bima ta'malun after all this was a big test you know, the idea of going against Quraysh and standing up against Quraysh, one of the, the muhajireen especially amongst them they were they were their relatives so there was a, a a soft heart just naturally there especially if you're a good believer you have a soft heart then that soft heart was there but no the sword of iman has to cut through all this وَمَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِنَ أَنْ يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجَدَ اللَّهِ And it is not for the pagans. They're over there sitting on top of the Kaaba of Allah. It's not for them to that they should uh, they should be the ones that are uh, holding uh, or maintaining the, the Masjid of Allah. شَاهِدِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ بِالْكُفْرِ They themselves are witness of their kufr. It's not like they're hiding their kufr. They're openly doing kufr. أُولَٰئِكَ حَبِتَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ وَفِي النَّارِ هُمْ خَالِدُونَ They have destroyed their actions and in the hellfire they will remain. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Look, the maintaining of the masjid is for the people who believe in Allah in the last day وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةَ and establish the prayer وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَى إِلَّا اللَّهِ And they don't fear anyone except for Allah. أَسَاءُ أُولَئِكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُحْتَدِينَ Perhaps these are the people that will attain to guidance. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ Allah make us amongst them. أَجْعَلْتُمْ Did you make سَقَايَةُ الْحَاجْ the, the, the giving the water to the people that come for Hajj. وَعَمَارَةُ الْمَسْجَادِ And the physical maintenance of the building. كَمَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ like the one who believes in Allah in the last day, وَجَاهَدَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And the one who struggles in the path of Allah, لا يستوون in the Allah. They are not the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not guide a wrongdoing people. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَانْفُسِهِمْ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةً إِنَّ اللَّهِ Those people who believed and did hijrah and did jihad in, in the path of Allah with their wealth and with themselves أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةً إِنَّ اللَّهِ They have a higher rank with Allah. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ They're the people that will have success. Do you think that the, uh, the country of Saudi Arabia for what it is doing, Siqayatul Hajj, and all these things, maintaining the buildings and looking, making it look more beautiful and more beautiful, and uh, and not actually standing and, and betraying Islam in every other possible way possible. Right? Especially now. Do you think that they have the right to maintain the house of Allah? Those Quraysh, the pagans didn't have that right. Today, the Saudi regime has lost that right. Based upon the same words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُبَشِّرْ وَيُبَشِّرْهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ وَرِدْوَانٍ وَجَنَّاتٍ لَهُمْ فِيهَا نَعِيمٌ مَقِيمٌ And for these people that have done everything for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives them the good news of His Rahmah, of His, of His happiness, and of Jannah, right? In which they will stay in forever. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدَا In it where they will stay forever. إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ For with Allah is the best of rewards. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخِذُوا Now, because these verses are revealed before the Prophet going, uh, taking control of Mecca. So the minds of the believers are being prepared for that, look, you know, standing up against your own family, this is what Iman dictates. Okay? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخِذُوا آبَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَوْلِيَاءِ نِسْتَحَبُّوا الْكُفْرَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ all you people who believe, do not take your fathers and your brothers as your protectors, as your friends. Istahabbu al-kufra ala al-iman in istahabbu if you choose iman over kufr. Wa man yatawalla hum minhum fa ulaika hum al-zalimun. Wa man yatawalla hum minkum, whoever you of you turns to them, right? They are the wrongdoers, meaning that. You, you have to, now this is, for a lot of people, going to be a very difficult thing to the idea that we have to now raid our own family, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing the minds of the believers that no iman comes first. And then the other thing that comes into the people's mind will come first, it will come there. But this ayah that now we're going to look at is extremely, 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 extremely important. It is a, me a measurement for all of us and something to think about for all of us. Where are we? in our love for Allah and His Messenger, and for the struggle of His deen, for the establishment of His deen. Allah says, O, o Prophet ﷺ, say to them, 
Okay, I think it's eight things on one side, three things on the other side. In kana abaukum wa abnaukum wa ikhwanukum, if your fathers and your children and your brothers wa azwajun and your wives wa ashiratukum and your families wa amwalun ikhtaraftumuha wa tijaratan takshona kasadaha and the uh, the wealth that you've accumulated and the trade that you fear loss of that business with masaki nutardonaha and the the houses that you've built that you love so much habba ilaykum are more beloved to you than the cause of Allah and his messenger jihad fi sabili and to struggle in his path fatarabbasu then go away sit down you can give all your lectures on any doing this and doing that but this is the criteria are you willing to commit yourself for the cause of Islam then go wait until Allah comes for his commands. Allah will not guide the wrongdoing people. You cannot be on justice unless you judge by the rule of Allah. And you cannot be you cannot be true to the rule of and the hukum of Allah <coughs> until you are committed to Islam completely. Now this will continue inshallah here. Now this is referring to a battle of the battle of Hunain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ مَوَاتِنَا كَثِيرًا Allah helped you in many, many situations. Okay? يَوْمَ حُنَيْنَ And in the day of Hunayn, this is a battle that took place after the conquest of Mecca. And because Muslims thought, you know, there are so many Muslims now, we can't lose. إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتَكُمْ فَلَنْ تُغْنِيَ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضِ so Allah said, on that day, you were so sure because of your numbers, you're going to win the battle. But no, right? But no, you're... And what happened is the people had left the battlefield and the Prophet was saying, oh, people who gave me bayah under the tree in Hudaybiyah, come back to me. People of Badr, come back to me. And the Prophet was saying, I'm the Prophet of Truth and come back to me. And so it was a difficult day on Muslims, right? And so the point is that, you know, don't go, don't look at appearances look at reality don't look at appearances look at reality those numbers they didn't help you any bit and the earth became narrow for you that day on <coughs> the battle was very difficult and they were in this valley place where as soon as they entered it all these arrows came at them made really things difficult but despite the fact that you may have thought you have a large army and the vastness of you know things in your control. And even after having large numbers, you had to turn your backs. Then this was because the level of iman of the people at this time, because a lot of people had entered into Islam, and um, the iman of the people at this time was not as strong as uh, you know the early Muslims, right? So that was there. ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَى الرَّسُولِ وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَنزَلَ جُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْنَهَا وَعَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent sakina on the Prophet and the believers. وَأَنزَلَ أَنزَلَ جُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْهَا And Allah sent an army that you couldn't see, meaning the angels. وَعَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And he punished the people who rejected the truth. ذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ This is the reward of those people who reject the truth. You can read up the Battle of Hunayn. Inshallah, we will continue. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the repentance after that for whomever He wills. Wallahu ghafurun rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن المشركين نجس فلا تقربوا المسجد الحرام بعد آمكم هذا. Or you people who believe, mushrikun, pagan worshippers are najas, they're impure. فَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَسْجِدُ الْحَرَامِ بَعْدَ آمِكُمْ هَذَا After this year, they cannot enter Mecca. They cannot enter the city of Mecca. مَسْجِدُ الْحَرَامِ وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ عَيْلَةً And if you fear poverty, why is this mentioned? Because when the Quraysh was there, and because of all these idols that were there, they, all these people used to come hajj and give, you know, some something to all these idols, and that used to become a source of income for the people of Mecca. So if you can do away with all these idols, we're going to become, I mean, the idea was for some people that we will become like poor. So Allah is saying, no, in khiftum a'ilatan, if you fear poverty, فَسَوْفَ يُغْنِيكُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you rich by his fadl, insha'a, if he wills. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is alim and hakim. Today, Saudi Arabia makes so much money by all the people that do hajj, right? And what does it give back to the ummah? 
it treats the Muslims that are in Arabia like second class, that are not Saudis as second class citizens, and has done no justice to the Muslim world whatsoever. And you know, whatever little they were doing with the, you know, Siqayat uh, al-Hajj like type things, just making some buildings, making some mosques, printing some Qur'ans, that's it. But otherwise, they betrayed Islam. Fight those people who don't believe in Allah in the last day. And they make uh, and they don't make haram what Allah has made haram. This is the power of legislation. You say alcohol is allowed, Allah said it's haram. These are the people that need to be opposed, antagonized. وَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Allah and His Messenger have made haram. وَلَا يُدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ And they don't surrender to the true deen. مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ حَتَّى يُؤْتِ الْجِزِيَ أَنْ يَدِينُ وَهُمْ صَاغِرُونَ Now that rule, the first rule, you have four months. If you don't accept Islam, you'll be killed. That is only for the time of the Prophet. This rule here in this ayah is to remain now. وَلَا يَدِينُوا دِينَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ And for the people of the book, يُعْتَ الْجِزِيَ They will have to give jizya. Either they give jizya, or they accept Islam, or they fight, or, number four, they have a contract, a, a some sort of covenant, a contract with, with, the, with the Muslim world, meaning there's some sort of sulha through a contract. Either you have a contract, or you don't have a contract. If you don't have a contract, then, you know, then that, leaves things out in the open. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ أُزَيْرِ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ And the Jews, they say Uzair. Uzair Azra was the person who was in, responsible for the second rise of Judaism. Now, I don't know of any literature that shows where Jews worshipped Uzair There's some Islamic literature regarding this, but what I do know is, is that it was very common in Jewish literature to call someone the son of Allah or the son of God. And this is what led to one of the reasons it became easy for Christians to say Jesus is the son of God, but it, they, it wasn't meant to be literal. So, like just as an example, inshallah, um, let me, um, you know, hear examples. I will be his father and he will be my son, right? I will be his father, he will be my son. He will be my son, I will be his father, right? Over now, you are all sons of the Most High, sons of the Mighty. And this is all in the Bible, okay? I am Israel's father, right? And uh, and then you say, I call him, I call my son. You are the sons of the living God. So you find this throughout the Bible, the idea of being the son of God. It didn't mean literally son of God, but it's, as you know, some people will literally take something, right? And this happens in history a lot of times, especially when it comes to scripture, that somebody will take something literally to mean something that it didn't it was meant to be metaphorical. This actually comes in Quran too. Nahnu Abnaullah, we're the sons of Allah. Wa ahibbahu. We read this ayah already. We're the sons of Allah and Allah loves us, right? Why does Allah then punish you? So the idea that the Son of God was there even amongst the Jews, and definitely there in the literal sense amongst the Christians, okay? So, uh, but uh, there is maybe in the future some, you know, discovery will be made and it will be made clear that Jews at this certain period, time period, or this location worshipped Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam. There are, uh, in, I think in Lebanon, some Jewish tribes who would not name their children uh, Azra. And there's debate over why, and one of the reasons is that some people said that because they believed Azra was the son of God, or was the son of Allah, this is why not to name. And the other said, no, it's because uh, Azra wanted them to go back to Israel, and they weren't going back to Israel, and so they and uh, because they were cursed by Azra, and therefore they didn't name their children Azra. So those things are there too, Allahu A'lam. But it is true that... Um, that uh, that what Allah said is true, but we do know that Isa والسلام, was called the son of God, and we know that the son of God is a common term in the Bible and can be misconstrued or misused. And also, I want to mention here something even more important: that there are some signs. I have to do more research into this, but when it comes to Azra and Kabbalah, because in Kabbalah, what you do is you're summoning the spirits of the prophets, 
right? You're summoning, you're bringing back the, even though it's a jinn or a shaitan, you're calling, even though they think a prophet has come, and many Jews believe in reincarnation, believe it or not. Especially those that believe in Kabbalah and these things. They believe in reincarnation. And so they call, they call, they summon the, 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 pro, the prophet, but what comes is shaitan. This is shirk. Summoning anything from the unseen is shirk. And so if they say that he is the son of Allah in the sense that he was close to Allah, but if they're summoning him in their Kabbalah and they're calling him in their Kabbalah works, then, you know, or they're doing magic through him, then this is also shirk. This, and, and so the ayat of Quran totally fit into that case. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ Uzair ibn Allah The Yehud they say Uzair is the son of Allah. وَقَالَتِ النَّصَرَى الْمَسِيحِ ibn Allah And the Nasara they say Masih ibn Allah. The Masih is the ibn of Allah. ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ This is, you know, something that they have invented with their mouths. يُضَاحِهُونَ They imitate. Imitate what? Because the real Christianity of t the not real the real Christianity was the Christianity of Jesus. The Christianity of today is Paulian Christianity. The real founder of Christianity of today's Christianity is a man named Paul, and Paul got his ideas and very correctly so. You know, it's mentioned in the Quran and is actually quite miraculous things that we're discovering in this this century. Allah has said one thousand four hundred year, years ago, you he you you that they were imitating. قَوْلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ By the, the, the kufr of the people before. Which is, these are the past civilizations that have already come up with the idea of uh, Trinity. Okay, how ancient trin Trinitarian gods influenced the adoption of Trinity. So, for example, you had Iris, you had Horus, and you had the sun, right? And you had this in Egypt, okay? So, he was using this ideas in Sumeria, in Babylonia, in India, right? In Greece, and in Egypt, right? And most probably in the case of Christianity from Egypt, okay? That uh, in other areas, the idea of three gods was already there, okay? The idea of three gods was already there, and they uh, just adapted it into Christianity to make the idea of three gods, okay? So this is already there, and you can look this up, how ancient Trinitarian gods influenced the adoption of Trinity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Meaning, the literal meaning is Allah will fight them, but it means that Allah is going to destroy them for what they have invented. It, it, and then the other thing, they took their priests and their rabbis as gods. One of the companions asked the Prophet, we never did this. Who, he was a former Christian. And then the Prophet, did he make your halal, halal? If the, if the rabbi said, this is halal or haram, you would agree to it. And the Prophet said about the haram, that they would make something haram and you would accept it as haram. He said, yes. He said, this is what it means to take gods. What else is it to, to, to take someone as God except that you take legislation from him? What is allowed, what is not allowed? If you take legislation from someone who says alcohol is allowed, gambling is allowed, and it's okay, right? Then that is your God. Those are the people you're listening to. He's your source of authority. Allah is not your source of authority. They took for themselves as their priests and their rabbis, right? As gods other than Allah. And they were not commanded, except they should completely surrender themselves to the one true God. There is no divine but Him, and He is perfect from the uh, shirk that they do. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. This is what's happening with the media today. Okay, and this they were trying to, especially the uh, the the Yahud, they were trying to stand back and you know trying to extinguish and incite people with their mouths to you know try to betray Islam. Allah wants to complete that he wants to complete his nur, his light, so that everyone can see the light, everyone can see Islam, everyone can see the, be enlightened with the light, the light of Islam. No matter how much the people that reject the truth, they dislike this. This ayah is the most important ayah of the Quran if you want to understand what was the mission of the Prophet. And this ayah comes three times. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق. It is Allah who sent His messenger with the al-huda, with the Quran, ودين الحق, the true deen. Why? What's the purpose? 
the mission, the jihad, what is it all for? To make Islam supreme, to make Islam wahir over all other adyan, over all other systems. No matter how the, much the people of shirk dislike this. It's already been made clear, if you take uh, halal and haram, legal and illegal from anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, this is shirk. So this is, what Allah, Allah wants that His will be imposed, this is His earth, it is His his earth, his laws. Just like a parent says, you know, to a child, my house, my rules. And just like it says in the Lord's Prayer of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. In the heavens you have the angels, they obey Allah. On earth, the will of Allah should be done. But no one can be forced into Islam. They have to have their own choice if they want to accept Islam or not. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّا كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَرَحْبَانِ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ The worst situation is where the people who work for this, for the cause of God, whether they're Ruhban or the rabbis or the monks, that if they become worldly, this is the worst of the worst of the worst. And the worst Islamic people, Muslim people, Allah, Allah forbid, Allah forbid, are those people, those scholars of Islam who become worldly. Their job has become to accumulate wealth of dunya through using their deen. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. إِنَّ مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَرُحْبَانِ Indeed, many of the priests and the rabbis يَعْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ who eat the wealth of the people with no just cause وَيَصَدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ and they stop people from the path of Allah وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ زَحَبَ الْوَالْفِدَّةِ uh, and those people who gather the treasures of silver and gold, they don't themselves spend in the cause of Allah. Give them the punishment of the, a very painful punishment. Give them the news of a very painful punishment. The day that they will be heated in the fire, Jahannam, and they will be branded, you know, like they'll be stamped. Biha, biha, he, he, jibahuhum in their foreheads, wajunubuhum on their sides, wadhuhuhum and in their backs. Hada makanastum. This is with you know with the gold that they used to collect will be put upon them and branded upon them. Hada makanastum li anfusikum fazuku ma kuntum tak 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 nizun. So this is was what you did for yourself. Now gather, you know, uh, the the things that you fazuku. Now taste what you had hoarded for yourself. May Allah save the scholars of Islam from such a punishment. Inna idda tashuhur in the Allah ithna ta'ashra fi kitab Allah. The months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are 12. Okay. In inna idda tashuhur in the Allah. The number of months with Allah are ithna ta'ashra, 12. Ashahran fi kitab Allah in the book of Allah. Yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard minha arba'atun hurum. From the day Allah created the heavens and the earth, four of them are sacred months. This is the the deen that is established on justice. Don't do wrong to yourselves in those holy months. And fight the pagans like they have fought you openly, you fight them openly. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the people that have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Over here, there's some about the previous ayah, I also want to mention the litmus test of the true or alim. You know, think about this. A monk, a monk who leaves everything, goes to a monastery, lives there, doesn't get married, lives on poverty. Why does he do it? To get close to Allah. So the litmus test of a true believer, okay, and a, a, no, a litmus test of a true scholar, a true scholar, ulama al-haq, are those people that didn't spend their lives trying to uh, you could say hoard wealth. If they spent, and especially using their sheep, meaning the people that listen to them, that uh, that kind of like follow them or respect them because of Islam, respect them because of Islam, and they didn't misuse them to hoard money. So those will be the true scholars. Then there are those people who see, oh, I have a following, I have such and such, 100 people coming to me, 200 people. It just takes a little bit enough to make hoarding. You know, you anybody who gets five, six hundred people after him, he can make a living with that. You know, getting a few, few, few hundred dollars from each person every now and then, he can make a living. But a true scholar is the one who's not interested in gathering and accumulating wealth. His main objective is is to be 
godly and to do godly things and to think about godly things and to teach about godly things. And this is one side. And then to sacrifice everything for the establishment of Islam. Okay. And you know the Arabs about the calendar uh, the, in the time of the Prophet, meaning before the Prophet had taken over. Uh, because obviously once you take over, one of the basic things you need to do is to have a calendar. Uh, to run the system and so on and so forth. And so it was now maintained that there will be 12 months from the day just as and, and uh, ju just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended. Because before this, the Arabs, what they used to do is they used to increase and decrease the number of, you know, maybe this they used to change one month for another month, one sacred month for a non-sacred month. They used to do things like this, okay? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so this is another example of making taking the law of Allah. See, one is Allah didn't say anything. So then you have your 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 collective opinion, your individual opinion. You could you want a red light or you want a purple light or you want whatever color for light for stopping traffic. That's up to you. But where Allah has spoken something, then you can't speak against that because that's Allah's opinion. If you're truly Muslim, if you're truly mu'min. So over here was another issue, which was the twelve months, and out of which four were sacred. So what they would do is. Make something halal one year and then make it, you know, go against the sacred month in one year and then replace it the next year. So, إِنَّمَا نَصِيَ زِيَادَةَ فِي الْكُفْرِ This postponing and increasing, okay, is fil, is kufr. يُفَصِّلُ بِهِ الَّذِي كَفَرُوا يُحَلَّوْنَهُ عَامًا وَيُحَرِّمُونَهُ عَامًا They made it halal in one year and then make it haram in the next year. لِيَوَاطِعُوا عِنْدَ مَا حَرَّمَ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ فَيُحِلُّ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ لِيَوَاطِعُوا to make to adjust it okay إِنَّ تَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ the the number of day the number of months Allah had made حرام فَيُحِلُّ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ and then they would make uh, they would make halal what Allah had made حرام زُيِّنَ لَهُمْ لَهُمْ سُوءَ أَعْمَالِهِمْ the evil of their deeds had been made beautiful in their eyes. Wallahu la yahtil qawmil kafirin. Allah doesn't guide a wrongdoing people, a people that, uh, kafirin, people that reject the truth. Ya ayyul ladhina amanu, ma lakum idha qila lakum an infiru fi sabilillahi thaqaltum ila al-ard. What is wrong with you when you're asked to leave in the cause of Allah? You get stuck on earth. أَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Are you happy with the life of this world? مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ More than the hereafter. فَمَتَاءُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَمَتَاءُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ What is this life compared to the next life except a very little? And this is the problem of the, the modern times. We don't really believe in the hereafter. We don't really believe that there's another life that's way, 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 way better than this life. Because we're so stuck. ثَاقَلْتُمْ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ We're so stuck into this world. إِلَّا تَنْفِرُوا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Now, this is uh, coming about... Uh, now, over here, it's like this surah you know, has a lot of issues. It is one of the more difficult surahs to understand because it's talking about one thing at one time and then another thing at another time. And the timings are like back and forth sometimes. What happened is the Prophet ﷺ had sent, uh, you know how he had sent letters to different uh, leaders of the world. He had sent a letter to one of the um, the areas that was under the Roman Empire. Haris radiallahu anh, I think it was his name, he went there as the ambassador and they killed him. And because he was under the Roman Empire, it was considered as if a declaration on behalf of the Roman Empire. Because no, you know, uh, satellite... A country or somebody under the Roman Empire can just kill another uh, em em ambassador without the permission of the Roman Empire. Anyway, so um, they killed him, and uh, so now this was a declaration of war. Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it led to a battle, and uh, a battle in which three thousand companions were there, and a hundred thousand uh, Roman army of a hundred thousand came. Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anh, to make a long story short, got them out of that situation and saved them. And then, now was this situation. Now this exposed, and you can say for a, many, many ayat now, this will be the exposing of the munafiqin, those people that are with the cause. And now the Prophet has said, 
every single person, every single mu'min has to get ready and go. Go. You have to go and fight. So he got ready 30,000 people that went to the Battle of Tabuk. It's another thing the Roman Empire never came out. Hercules probably at that time, if you read the Hadith and say Bukhari, probably believed that the Prophet was the true Prophet because he now was, he had asked Abu Sufyan about the Prophet by that time. And it's, uh, I think, the very first Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, basically, Bada'ul Wahi, um, which I don't think we have time to go through today uh, or in this juz, this particular juz, because of the timing issue, it would become too long. But uh, Hercules had asked the companion and asked him about the Prophet, and he basically believed in him. And so he never sent an army against the Prophet Sallallahu when the Prophet brought an, out an army of 30,000. But at the same time, there was the harvest. The harvest was ready. And the Prophet's like, let's go to battle at a time where people need to get their harvest, otherwise the harvest is ruined. And so now people are going to make all sorts of excuses why they can't go and, and, and you know, why they shouldn't go. And it's going to be a long journey. And this is the first time that such a large group of Muslims are going anywhere. The Prophet comes back from the Battle of Tabuk and he is going to deal with, a, you know, a lot of issues when he comes back from the Battle of Tabuk, in which there was no war there. But he made the point, the Prophet made the point, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet had uh, gotten ready another army under uh, Zayd radiallahu an, and the Prophet had uh, passed away before they were uh, just as they were dispatched and this was one of the decisions Abu Bakr radiallahu an, had to make was not to recall because the Muslims were going through a tough time and uh, one of the suggestions was to recall Zayd, Zayd uh, radiallahu an, uh, and you know until things are more stable and Abu Bakr decided not to do that because that army that the Prophet had dispatched how can he call, re, re, retract that order of the Prophet ﷺ. If you don't go out, all of you, you Allah will punish you with a severe punishment, a very painful punishment. punishment. And Allah will replace with you another people. And you will not be able to cause hurt Allah in the least bit. Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir, and Allah has the power over all things. Illa an tanfiru faqad nasarakum nasarahullah. Illa tansuruhu. Except that you don't let it be that you don't support him. Faqad nasarallahu id akhraja alladina kafaru. Uh, and Allah has already helped the Prophet when they took the Prophet out of the house. Don't you see he had the conquest of Mecca? Do you not see that the help of Allah is with the Prophet? Thanius name when the second of the two, إِذْهُمَا فِي الْغَارِ When they were in the cave, إِذْ يَقُولُوا لِصَاهِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا When the Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Bakr, لِصَاهِبِهِ for his, with his companion, لَا تَحْزَنْ Don't worry, don't worry, I'll be fine. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا Allah is with me. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَةُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِرُوهِ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْنَهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even at that time, He, he sent Sakina وَأَيَّدَهُ and gave him support with armies you cannot see. فَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سُفْلَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the words and the slogans and the calls of the people who rejected the truth lower. وَجَعَلَهُ وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ الْأُلْيَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made His word supreme. This is what uh, the Prophet, كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ الْأُلْيَا I fight for the kalima of Allah to be most supreme. وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah is most powerful, most wise. You may go light or you may go heavy. And struggle, strive, uh, uh, and struggle in the path of Allah with your with your with your wealth and yourselves. This is best for you if you did, but no. لو كان عرضا قريبا أو سفرا قاصدا لا تتبعك ولكن uh, uh, now this is talking about the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. Now if it would have been a near battle, you know somewhere aradan qariban or safran qasidan, or you know if it had been like you know not not uh, uh, not a very long trip, they would have followed you. But 
what is what is uh, but the distance has made very difficult for them so, billahi. they will swear by allah you know one of the people came to the prophet and said oh romans they have very beautiful women and i don't want to get tempted i don't want to go things like this sayahlifuna billahi law istana la kharajna ma'akum and if we could we could we would definitely come out with you yuhlikuna anfusahum they destroy themselves wallahu ya'lamu annahum la kadhibun and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows fully well that they are lying and you know allah the prophet was very nice so they would swear by allah they would make excuses and the prophet would buy into the excuses so over here allah says afa allahu anka lima adina lan adina adinat azinta lahum may allah forgive you that you gave them permission to stay behind hatta yatabayyana laka alladhina sadaqu wa ta'lamu al kadhibin you know you shouldn't have given permission this easily allah wanted to, allah wants to make it clear alladhina sadaqu those people that are true to the word of allah and those people that are lying لا يستعزين نوكا الذين يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر أن يجاهدوا بأموالهم لا يستعزين نوكا those who believe in Allah in the last day they don't ask for permission okay أن يجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم that they fight in the path of Allah they don't make excuses they're very serious about the 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 truth have, having to prevail والله عليم بالمتقين and Allah سبحانه وتعالى knows who are the people of taqwa إنما يستعنوك الذين لا يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر. Only those people that come seek permission from you and request you this and request you that and make excuses here and there. Those people who don't believe in Allah in the last day, what تابت قلوبهم and their hearts are in doubt, right? فهم في رأيهم يترددون and they are in their doubt. They're just like you know because of that they're hesitating, right? لو أرادوا خروجا so if they and Allah says لو أرادوا الخروج أعطوا لك له if they had truly wanted to come out they would have at least made you know they made their excuses but why didn't they even prepare for it له عدة ولكن كره الله أم 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 بعثهم ف فثبطهم so Allah made them lag behind and then Allah said وقيل اقعدوا مع القائدين go ahead sit with those people that sit you're not going to be of the people that are in the struggle and in the cause of Allah سبحانه وتعالى لو خرجوا فيكم ما زادكم إلا قبالة and these hypocrites that were already making excuses now if they were with you they would have been complaining here complaining there hurting the morale so it's so Allah سبحانه وتعالى kept them back ولا 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 أوضعوا خلالكم. so Allah سبحانه وتعالى says ولا ولا أو أو ضعوا خلالكم. they would have been active amongst you يبغونكم فتنة to create فتنة amongst you. وفيكم سماؤنا لهم and amongst you are those people who listen to these people. والله عليم بالظالمين and Allah knows people that are ظالم that do ظلم. لقد ابتغوا الفتنة من قبل. These people are the same people who created fitna before. Now they're making excuses. They don't want to go out. It was it was a hard test to leave all your harvest. You know, a lot of people say, "I wish I was in the time of the Prophet." Who knows how we would have reacted in these very very difficult tests? ولقد ابتغوا الفتنة من قبل وقلبوا لك أمور. And O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. They made things upside down in your affairs before. They tried to take things, turn around in your affairs before. حتى حتى جاء الحق وظهر أمر الله وهم كارهون until the truth came and Allah made the things apparent, like Allah exposed these same people in Surah Al Imran in the Battle of Ohud وهم كارهون and they disliked this. ومنهم من يقول آذن لي ولا تفتني and amongst them, there were those people who said, "Please give me permission. Don't put me in a trial." Those women, they're very beautiful over there. Allah fil fitnati saqatu. You yourself have fallen to a fitna. You're trying to you're trying to use the excuse of not being in fitna. You're in fitna. Wa inna jahannam la muhaytum bil kafirin. And the jahannam is going to be filled and will encircle the, those people who reject the truth. You had a chance to do to to stand up for the cause. 
وَإِن تُسْبِكْ حَسَنَةٌ تُسُؤْهُمْ And if something good happens to you, it hurts. It makes them feel bad. وَإِن تُسُبْكَ مُصِيبَةٌ يَقُولُونَ قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَيَتَوَلَّوْهُمْ فَرِهُونَ And so if something evil happens, they say, يَقُولُونَ قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ We take our matters to our hands. You know, it's good we didn't follow you. We took the matters into our hands. وَتَوَلَّوَهُمْ فَرِهُونَ And they turn away and they be, they're so happy. They think that, you know, they 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 got it all. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبُنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَهُوَ مَوْلَانَا Say, O Prophet وسلم, say to them, nothing comes to us good or what you may consider as evil except Allah has written for it who are maulana he's our protector and the believers they trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قُلْ هَلْ يَتَرَبَّصُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْأُسْنَيَينَ and say O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to them هَلْ يَتَرَبَّصُ بِنَا do, should we, 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 are you gonna wait with us? It, 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 because it, for us, there's only one of the two ways. One of the two goods. Right? Either we die in the cause of Allah or we come back as victors. So say to them, do you wait for one of the you're waiting for one of the two things to happen to us either we die or we get victory we're also waiting for you which of the two will happen to you will Allah punish you or will Allah punish you with our hands will Allah punish you from himself or from our hands then go wait and we're also waiting whatever Allah decides right you think we won't come back this has happened before قُلْ إِنْ قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا تَوْأَنْ أَوْ كَرْحَ You spend willingly or unwillingly. لَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْكُمْ We don't want your money. Keep it. إِنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ You are a people that are wrongdoing. وَمَا مَنَعَكُمْ أَنْ تُقَبَّلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَتَهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ and since they're not spending in the cause of Allah, because Allah has not allowed it for them, their money to come into the path of Allah. So, مَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَنْ يَتَقَبَّلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَتَهُمْ What has prevented them that they, that is is the fact that their their نَفَقَ, their spending will not be accepted. إِلَّا أَنْ وَأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And they've denied Allah and His Messenger. وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةِ They don't come to prayer. إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَ Except they're very lazy. You know, they come because everyone else is coming in the whole society there. So they have to come. وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا هُمْ كَارِهُونَ And of course, they never spend except they dislike it. They don't want to give anything of theirs. Right? فَلَا تُعْجِبُكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادَهُمْ Don't be, uh, don't be uh, impressed uh, by their wealth and by their children. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ وَعَذِّبَهُمْ بِهَا Allah wants to punish them with this. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَتَزْحَقَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ And Allah wants that, you know, that they die and that they, are, they don't die on the truth. They die denying the truth. يُحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ أَنَّهُمْ لَوْ مِنْكُمْ مَا وَمَا هُمْ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ نَهُمْ قَوْمٌ يَفْرَقُونَ They swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're with you. وَمَا هُمْ مِنْكُمْ But they're not with you. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ يَفْرَقُونَ Okay, but they are just a people that are afraid. They're so scared for their lives that the Prophet has said, let's go for jihad and we have to go against the sole, sole supreme power of the world. No, it wasn't, the Persian Empire was also a great power at that time. But you know what I mean. So, وَلَوْ يَجِدُونَ مَلْجَأَ If they would have found some refuge or مَغَارَاتِ Or some caves. مُدْخَلَ uh, they would have entered. لَوَلَّوْا إِلَيْهِ وَهُمْ يَجْمَحُونَ And they would have, you know, just uh, turned to it and gone into it just just without any hesitation. And heedless. وَمِنْهُمْ Now this was, uh, an, uh, you could say, the weak Muslims also, and some of the munafiqeen, and, and, and some of these people were complaining. وَمِنْهُمْ يَلْزِمُونَكَ 
And some of them are those that blame you, O Prophet ﷺ, regarding the charities. Right? If you give it to them, they're happy. Then they become angry. Right? Uh, this is uh, another very uh, interesting issue. Over here, uh, those people that blame you in regards to the charities, in the charities, and if you don't give them, they get angry. There was one munafiq, you know, now there's uh, the Prophet has charity with him, and he's giving, to, there's a line, and he's giving, and sometimes he's giving someone more, sometimes he's giving someone less. So one of the munafiqeen, he said, Oh, Muhammad, do justice. This got the Prophet ﷺ really upset and really angry. And the Prophet said, if I don't do justice, who will do justice? And about the previous ayah before about going into the caves and everything, uh, the point there is that if the munafiqeen can now, because they were nor here nor there this whole time, and now that Islam has become triumphant, Islam has succeeded, Islam has become victorious, they wish because now they know that they've been caught. And with all their excuses they had been giving all this time, you know, they wish that they could just hide somewhere. That's one thing. Second thing is, this munafiq, uh, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? What is the right attitude, what it should have been? وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ رَضُوا مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ If they had been happy with Allah and His Messenger gave them, sometimes it could have been a little, little bit, sometimes it could have been a little bit more. قَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَسَيُؤْتِينَ اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Always have a good opinion about Allah. Hasbunallah, Allah is enough, and Allah will give us from His Fadl. وَرَسُولُهُ إِنَّا إِلَى رَبِّنَا إِنَّا إِلَى إِلَى اللَّهِ رَاغِبُونَ And we have our raghba, our hopes, and our desires with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, you know, the Prophet, you're in line, and the Prophet gives you anything. You should be happy, right? Now, this ayah is the ayah about zakat. The sadaqah that is mandatory. إِنَّمَا صَدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُعَلَّفَةَ الْقُلُوبِ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِرِمِينَ فِي وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ إِنَّمَا indeed a sadaqah, that sadaqah which is made mandatory لِلْفُقَرَاءِ is for the fuqara, for the poor. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ and those that can't help themselves. These can also be people uh, that may have full well developed bodies, they can work, but psychologically they're not up to it. وَعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا And those people that collect the taxes. وَالْمُعَلَّفَةُ الْقُلُوبِ And those people whose hearts you want to bring close to Islam. وَفِي الرِّقَابِ And the slaves. وَالْغَارِمِينَ And those people that are stuck as prisoners of war. وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And for the path of Allah. So everything from the helping the poor, to the path of Allah. You know, the money is what? Zakat. What's the difference between sadaqah and zakat? Sadaqah is individual. You can give it to whoever you want. As much as you want, it's sadaqah. Zakat is actually that money that goes to Baytul Mal in the Khilaf. It goes to the, the the Islamic treasury. It is the the money that is collected and then given according to the priorities of the ummah and priorities of the government and for the cause of Islam according to what is really the need at this time. Then you know you have the different categories. It could be given to the poor. It could be given the cause of Allah. It could give, be given to release the prisoners of war. It could be given to somebody to bring them closer to Islam. So all these are possibilities, right? Faridatam min Allah. So this is farida. You have to do this. Wallahu alimun hakim. And Allah is all knowing and all wise. وَمِنْهُمْ هُمُ الَّذِينَ يُؤْزُونَ النَّبِيِّ وَيَقُولُنَا هُوَ وَهُوَ أُزِنٌ وَمِنْهُمْ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ النَّبِيِّ And amongst them, there are those people who <coughs> pain the Prophet. How? By coming and making excuses. <coughs> and the Prophet's listening to them, so they make fun of the Prophet. First, they're making excuses, then they're making fun of the fact that he's listening to those excuses and give him a label. وَيَقُولُنَا هُوَ أُذُنٌ He's an ear. He just keeps listening and listening and listening. قُلْ أُذُنٌ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ his ears are better for you. يؤمن بالله وال ل لمن لكم يؤمن بالله it is قل أذن أذنه خير لكم. His his listening is better for you. 
for the one who believes in Allah and wal yu'min lil mu'minin and he believes in he in generally the prophet has a state where he believes in the believers see it, over here you'll see it doesn't say yu'minuna bil mu'minin that would mean like in the sense of iman imaniyat but you yu'minuna lil mu'minin wa rahmatan lil ladina amanu minkum and he is a mercy for those uh, amongst you who have faith وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ رَسُولَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Those of you who want to pain the Messenger of Allah, لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ For them is a painful punishment. يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ لِيَرْضُوكُمْ They swear by Allah, right? To make you happy. وَاللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ أَحَقُّ أَن تَرْضُوهُ إِنْ كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah and His Messenger have more of a right to be made happy, right? If you were truly believers, meaning by doing what Allah and His Messenger want. Alam ya'lamu annahu man yuhadidi Allah wa rasoolahu fa anna lahu nara jahannama khalidina fiha. Do you not know that those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, fa anna lahu nara, for them is the fire jahannama khalidina fiha, in which they will remain forever. Thalika jazaul azim. Thalika khizul azim. This is the biggest humiliation. وَمَنْ يَحْزِرُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ أَنْ تُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُورَةٌ تُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ And the hypocrites, يَحْزُرُ They're scared. أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُورَةٌ That some surah should be revealed تُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ About what is really in their hearts. قُلْ إِسْتَحْوَزُوا إِسْتَحْوَزُوا إِسْتَحْزِئُوا you're mocking. Inna Allah mukhrijum ma tahzarun. And say mock, mock. Okay, you, what this thing you were saying about the Prophet behind his back, about him being the ear and he's listening to everything and uh, making fun of him and Allah has now revealed it. You know, Allah says, istahzi'u. Inna Allah mukhrijum ma tahzarun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose that which you were fearing. He will show them, show the Prophet what you were, you were thinking in your hearts. لَإِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولَنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ And if you ask them, they will definitely say, Oh, no, no, خُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ We're just playing, you know, we were just talking. We didn't really mean that. قُلْ أَبِاللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَحْزِئُونَ No, by Allah and His Messenger. أَبِاللَّهِ I swear by Allah. أَبِاللَّهِ You know, uh, is it with Allah and His ayat and His messengers that you are mocking? They're really being put in the corner here, the munafiqeen. وَلَا تَعْتَزِلُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ لَا تَعْزِرُوا Don't give any excuses. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ You've already, did, even these words, they're like kufr. إِنْ نَعْفُوا أَنْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ نُعَذِّبْ طَائِفَةٌ Okay, we part, you know, we na'fu, uh, uh, we forgave a group of you, minkum. وَنُعَذِّبُ طَائِفَةً And the other group we uh, punished. بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ This is because they were criminals in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتْ بَعْضُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْضِ The munafiqeen, men and women, they are one of the other. يَعْمُرُونَ بالمنكر. What do they do? They enjoin the evil. وينحون عن المنكر. And they stop the good things. ويقبضون أيديهم. نسى الله فنسيهم. نسى الله فنسيهم. ويقبضون أيديهم. They close their hands, meaning not to give in the cause of Allah. نسى الله فنسيهم. They forgot Allah. Allah made them forget themselves. إن المنافقين هم الفاسقون. These people who claim Islam but are not true to Islam, they are the real evil doers. Think about the leaders of today. وعد الله المنافقين والمنافقات والكفار نار جهنم خالدين فيها. Allah promises the منافقين, men and women and the kuffar, those who rejected the truth, نار جهنم خالدين فيها. فحسبهم. This is enough for them. ولا عنهم الله. And Allah has removed, has cursed them. He's removed His mercy for them. ولهم عذاب مقيم. And for them is a punishment that will stay. And now here in this part of the Quran, because now the victory has been attained and the munafiqeen have become apparent, and now 
A lot of emphasis being given to the hypocrites. Those before you who were also uh, turning their backs to Islam. You know, they had their time of, of their entertainment, you can say. They had their portion of their entertainment. You also will get your point, a portion of entertainment and fun. Just as the people before you, they had their time for their, their portion, whatever it was. And they also engaged in idle talk, and you're also engaging in all, all idle talk against the Prophet, basically. Their actions are completely null and void in this world and the next. They're the, the true losers in all of this. So did not the news come to you of the people of Nuh and Ad and Thamud and the people of Ibrahim? This is the first time in Quran the Qawm of Ibrahim is mentioned. Uh, but nowhere is it explicitly mentioned exactly what happened to them. But this ayah points to the fact maybe the people of Ibrahim were also punished. Was Habul Madian and the people of Madian wal Mu'tafakat. Messengers came to them with clear signs. It is not for Allah to do injustice to them. But they were in fact doing, they had done wrong to themselves. Just like the kafirin are awliya for one bad, munafiqeen are awliya for one uh, one another, uh, and the mu'mineen are and mu'mineen wal mu'minat are awliya ba'dhum li ba'd. Ya'muruna bil ma'roof, they enjoin the good, wa yanhawni an al munkar, forbid the evil, wa yaqimu salat, wa yu'tu zakat. They establish the prayer and give the zakat, wa yuti'una Allah wa rasoolah. They obey Allah and His Messenger, ulaika sayyarhamahum Allah. These are the people Allah will have mercy upon. In Allah Azizun Hakim, indeed Allah is the most powerful, most wise. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the mu'mineen, uh, men and women, جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا In it, there will be residential gardens underneath which rivers flow. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا In it, they will remain. مَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتٍ عَدَنْ They will have purified houses in, in the gardens of Eden. And the happiness of Allah is most supreme. ذلك الفوز العظيم. This is the greatest success. يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين وغلظ عليهم ومأواهم جهنم. O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, do jihad against the kuffar and munafiqin. وغلظ عليهم. Be harsh on them now. This is the time. Because before the Prophet was listening and let, letting them give all the excuses, but now is the time to be harsh. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ And their place is the hellfire. وَبِئْصَ الْمَصِيرِ And what an evil return it is. يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا They swear by Allah. يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا Now the details of this will come to المنافقون when that comes. But they swear by Allah about what... Now what happened is, one of the companions, the Prophet that was young, he was sitting and he heard Abdullah bin Ubay say something. He reported to the Prophet... He had said something against the Prophet. So he reported it to the Prophet. The Prophet called him. He said, oh no, this young man is trying to, you know, just create fitna and fasad, and he's just trying to create problems, and, we're, we're, you know, I'm, I'm sincerely with you, and all that, right? So over here, يَحْلِفُونَ billah. They swear by Allah ma qalu what they said. لَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةُ الْكُفْرِ They did say, in fact, the young boy was right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended him here. قَالُوا كَلِمَةُ الْكُفْرِ he did say the words of kufr. وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ And they did kufr after their Islam. وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا This was on the way back from Tabuk, the Prophet was going. The, some of the munafiqeen, they had decided to kill the Prophet ﷺ. They were unsuccessful, so this is what's being referred to here. هَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا they, they tried to do what they couldn't reach to do. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهِ And what is, what is, uh, you know, what is, what did they want revenge for? The Allah made, uh, Allah and His Messenger made them rich out of their fadl, min fadlihi. 
أغناهم الله ورسوله من فضله وأن يتوب وأن يتوب يك خير لكم. If you do tawbah, it's better for you. فإن تولوا يعذبهم الله عذابا أليما. And if you turn your backs, then and you know those people that were munafiqin that tried to kill the prophet, they had covered their face, but the prophet had told his companion of the prophet their names. هذيفا رضي الله عنه. Who was known as Sahib al Sir al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the man who has the secrets of the Prophet. He knew the names of all the munafiqin. He had uh, the knowledge of many of the signs of the hours, like this. He had many, and remember, the Prophet didn't make a law and order situation. He just kept this between himself and one companion. يَتَوَلَّوْ يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ in this world and the next world. وَمَا لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ they don't have on this earth any wali, any helper, any any wali, any protector, any helper now. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَحَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ أَتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِ لَلَا صَدَقَنَّ وَلَنَكُونَ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ They are amongst the people who promise Allah, if you give us, we will definitely give in your cause, and we will definitely become good, we will become صَالِحِينَ We will surrender to your will. This is what the people of Pakistan did. They promised Allah, we want Pakistan for Islam, and they betrayed their trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and very soon you will find Pakistan in a very difficult situation. So Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَحَدَ اللَّهِ لَإِنْ أَتَانَا they, they said to Allah, Allah, we, if you give to us min fadl from your fadl, we will definitely give in the cause of Allah and we will definitely be of the righteous people. فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِ if Allah, when, when Allah gave him, them from his fadl, بَخَلُوا بِهِ They became selfish. وَتَوَلَّوْا هُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ They turned away and they were uh, just in, you could say, uh, just in refusal. فَآقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ So this is what happens. This is how the munafiqeen, one of the ways they became munafiq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put nifaq, hypocrisy in their hearts. إِلَى يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ Till the day you, you meet him. بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَدَهُ Because of the broken promise you made with Allah. You pr promised Allah something. Allah, you broke the promise with Allah and now you have nifaq in your hearts. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ So be careful of the promises you make to Allah. Astaghfirullah. أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُوا سِرَّكُمْ سِرَّهُمْ وَنَجْوَاهُمْ Do you not know Allah knows their secrets and what they uh, plot and plan? وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَّامُ الْغِيُوبِ Do you not know Allah knows everything already? الَّذِينَ يَلْمِزُونَ مُطَوِّعِينَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي صَدَقَاتِ so what had happened is, you know, Tabuk was a big battle that was supposed to happen. It didn't happen, but it was, you know, the Muslims didn't know that Allah would prevent the battle from happening. But th this was going to be huge against the Roman Empire. Everything was needed. So one companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he worked all night and he got a few dates. He went home, gave half the dates to his wife. And then he came home and gave the, uh, and then he went to the Prophet, gave half the dates to him. Now the Munafiqeen, they were, uh, they were making fun of this man. Oh, yeah, he worked, oh, what a big sadaqa, what a big sadaqa. And you know, the Prophet took it and he covered, uh, you know, sprinkled this man's dates that he had around the, the entire, uh, uh, where everyone was coming with their resources, their pledges, their donations. And the, Pro the Prophet said, this is more weighty in the sight of Allah than all of this. So by, by taking that little amount, but the barakah that was in there, he, the Prophet spread that barakah around with the money of everyone else because that little amount had more barakah. Okay? الَّذِينَ يَلْمِزُونَ Those people that criticize مُطَوِّعِينَ Those people that willingly مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي صَدَقَاتِ Those people amongst the believers who were giving sadaqah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَّا جُحْدَهُمْ Those who couldn't find anything except by hard work. You know, they had to work, right? They had to struggle to get something to the Prophet ﷺ. This was going to be a big battle. فَيَسْخُرُونَ مِنْهُمْ So these munafiqeen are sitting there and looking at, oh, yeah, he worked all night to get these few dates. Astaghfirullah. سَخِرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Allah is the one who's mocking them. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ For them is a painful punishment. So this type of attitude, now Allah is saying to the Prophet, أَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ 
whether you need istighfar for them or you don't do istighfar for them. In tastaghfir lahum sab'ina marra. O Prophet ﷺ, if you do istighfar for them even 70 times, لَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Allah will not forgive, forgive them. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ This is because by these types of actions they've done kufr by, of Allah and His Messenger. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah doesn't guide a people that, do, that are evildoers. فَرِهُ فَرِحَ الْمُحَلَّفُونَ بِمَقَاعِدِهِمْ خَلَافِ الرَّسُولِ So happy are the people that stayed back. So now they've left, the companions of the Prophet have left. They've gone to the battle of Tabuk. And now these munafiqeen, they've made the excuses and now they've stayed back. They're so happy with their sitting. Then, Rasulullah in, in opposition to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu وَكَرِهُ أَنْ يُجَاهِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they disliked that they would do jihad with them with their wealth and with themselves فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَقَالُوا لَنْ تَنْفِرُوا فِي الْحَرُ And they said to the people, don't go in the heat, it's so hot. And this is the time of the harvest. Who wants to, you know, let go their harvest for the, these goals uh, that Muhammad wants, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ نَارُ جَحَنَّمَ أَشَدُّ حَرَّةً Say the Jahannam, the, 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 the fire of the hellfire is more hot. لَوْ كَانُوا يَفْقَهُونَ If they did but understand. فَيَدْحَقُوا كَلِيلًا وَيَبْكُوا كَثِيرًا جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Let them, you know, laugh a little and cry a lot. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ This is the reward they get for the evil that they have earned. فَإِنْ رَجَعْكَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ فَاسْتَعْزُنَكَ لِخُرُوجِ فَإِنْ رَجَعْكَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ O Prophet ﷺ, if you return back to a group of them, right? فَاسْتَعْزِنُكَ Then they, you know, pretending, then they say, Okay, can you give us permission to come with you next time you go to battle? لِخُرُوج فَقُلْ لَنْ تَخْرُجُ مَعِيَ أَبَدًا So Prophet tell them, never ever will you come out with me again. وَلَنْ تُقَاتِلُ مَعِيَ أَدُوَ And you will not fight with me, my enemies. إِنَّكُمْ رَضِيتُمْ بِالْقُعُودِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً You failed the test, essentially. You agreed, you wanted to sit down the first time. Now you stay down, sitting down with the people that stayed behind. O Prophet ﷺ, up till this time, the Prophet was praying even for the munafiqeen. After all, he said the shahada, this is what the Prophet wanted to save people from, from the hellfire at the individual level. But now Allah said, over, over there Allah said, if you do istighfar for them, 70 times, but here Allah said, don't even pray for them. وَلَا تُصَلِّي عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ أَحَدًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدًا Don't pray for any of them ever. So then it happened that after this ayah, when anyone would come to the Prophet to pray the janazah prayer for any of the munafiqeen that would die, the Prophet said, let one of your brothers pray his janazah prayers. لَا تُصَلِّي عَلَىٰ أَحَدًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا any of them that died, let not the Prophet, it, oh, you do not pray over them abada ever. وَلَا تُكُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ Don't even stand over their graves, Prophet ﷺ. إِنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ They have done kufr of Allah and His Messenger. وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And they have died, and they are evildoers. وَلَا تُعْجِبُكُ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ Don't be like amazed by their wealth and their children. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ بِهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَتَزْحَقَ أَنفُسَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish them uh, with these things in the world, okay? And that they're تَزْحَقَ uh, أَنفُسُهُمْ كَافِرُونَ And their soul leaves them while they are in a state of disbelief of the truth. وَإِذَا أُنزِلَ سُورَةٌ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَجَاهَدُوا مَعَ الرَّسُولِ استأذنك أولى الطول منهم وقالوا زرنا نكم مع القائدين. Whenever a surah is sent down, believe in Allah and do jihad. استأذنك. They seek permission from you. 
who seeks permission from you? Those people that are wealthy amongst them. And they have all sorts of excuses, right? Leave us, we will be with those that are staying back, are going to sit down, okay? رضو أن يكون مع الخوا خوالف وطب على قلوبهم وهم لا يفقهون. They were satisfied to be with the people that stay back. Okay, and طب على قلوبهم a seal has been put in their hearts وهم لا يفقهون. Don't you know the real thing is the struggle of Allah, the struggle for the Deen is the real cause and the real purpose of life. لكن الرسول والذين آمنوا معه جاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم أولئك لهم خيرات لكن but the messenger and those that believe معه that are with him جاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم they do jihad with their wealth and with themselves أولئك لهم خيرات for them is the good things okay and أولئك هم المفلحون these are the people that are truly successful أعد الله لهم جنات تجري من تحت النار خالدين فيها الله has prepared for them residential gardens underneath which rivers flow for forever ذلك الفوز العظيم this is the greatest success اللهم جعلنا منهم وجاء المعذرون من الأعراب now this is talking about the Bedouins okay and they also come with their excuses because they were new in Islam. They had come into Islam at the, the phase where إِذَا جَعَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When Allah's help and victory came, وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ يَفْوَجَ They came in groves and droves and they were accepting Islam, but you know, they weren't fully there. So these people didn't, weren't munafiq. They weren't two-way. They accepted Islam, but they were weak. وَجَاءَ الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنِ الْعَرَابِ So they came with their excuses from amongst the Bedouins. يُؤْذُونَ لَهُمْ وَقَعَادُ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا So they, they lied to Allah and His Messenger and wanted to sit. سَيُصِيبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they will also get a severe punishment from Allah or a, a, a painful punishment. Now, of course, there are the exceptions. لَيْسَ عَلَى الْضُعَفَاءِ وَعَلَى الْمَرْضَاءِ On the weak and the people that are sick. sick وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ حَرَجْ And those people have nothing to give. There's no blame on them. إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Okay? And those that are sincere to Allah and His Messenger. وَمَا عَلَى الْمُحْسِنِينَ مِنْ سَبِيلِ And there's no uh, path you can say against the people that are muhsinin. There's no way against the muhsinin, those that do good. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah is غفور and رحيم, most forgiving and most merciful. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا آتُوكَ لِتَحْمِلُوهُمْ قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا فِي أَحْمِلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ and then on the other side, instead of the munafiqeen and the people that were laggers, were the people that were so, so desperate to go with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and to partake in the in the battle with the Prophet وسلم, But they didn't have any way of going. So they, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا آتُوكَ لِتَحْمِلُهُمْ So they, they came to the Prophet, they said, take us, give us a mount, give us a camel, give us a horse, we'll come with you. لا قل, قلت, and you said to them, لا أجدوا مَا أَحْمِلُ لَكُمْ عَلَيْهِ I don't find anything that I could take you in. تَوَلَّوْا وَعَائِنُهُمْ تُفِيدُوا مِنَ الدَّمْ And their heart, their eyes were filled, they swelled up with, with, with tears. حَزَنًا أَنْ لَا يَجِدُوا مَا يُنْفِقُونَ That they, out of grief, that they had nothing, to, they couldn't give, they couldn't go. You know, they were really sad. And they wanted to be with the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. إنما سبيل على الذين يستعزنونك. The 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 blame is on those people who who were coming to you for permission. و و وهم أغنياء but they had wealth. رضوا أن نكون من الخوالف وتبع على قلوبهم وهم لا يعلمون. And uh, they had they had wealth. رضوا they were happy أن أن يكون من الخوالف that they were amongst the laggers and Allah put a seal over their hearts and the fact is they have no understanding right and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says now the Prophet was coming back as you know from the battle of Tabuk so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذَا رَجَعْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ O Prophet Wasallam, they are going to give excuses to you all when you come back. Oh, we this and we that and we couldn't come and we, you know, all this. وَلَا تَعْذِرُوا لَنْ 
لن نؤمن لكم قد بينا الله من أخباركم Don't give us excuses. Allah has made everything clear to us. Okay? Allah has already told us. The only thing that can be said is, Sayyara Allahu a'malakum wa rasulu. Allah will see what you do now, what attitude you take now in the Messenger. Thumma yirudduna ila alim al ghayb. Then you will return to the one who knows all the unseen things. Wa shahada fa yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'amalun. And Allah will tell you at that time of all the things that you used to do. Sorry, I went uh, two ayahs over the Jews, but that's okay. So now let's look at this. So, Sutta Tawbah, Declaration of Independence, uh, the discussion with the pagans that you cannot, you know, you cannot weaken Allah. Now this is it. The punishment's coming. Uh, and then how the people of the book acted, making, making the halal, haram, and haram, and halal, and all that, and the battle of the book, and then the hypocrites. We studied, this is what we studied up till uh, for now. Okay, and this subject is going to continue about the hypocrites and, you know, how they had uh, betrayed Islam uh, over and over again, including, and in this case, including the Battle of Tabuk. Uh, so, inshallah ta'ala, we will continue with the 11th juz. Uh, this is a very interesting juz. This surah, the Tawbah especially, is very interesting, has a lot, a lot of topics. And uh, if you're not careful, it can become a little bit confusing what is being talked about and and so inshallah i've made many of those salient features salient issues those important issues clear so you can follow the flow of the surah inshallah ta'ala make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas I'm <laughs>